Okay, Chair, we're now live on YouTube. When you're ready, would you like to start the meeting? Yes, thank you, Wendy. Good morning and welcome to East Dem District Council's Virtual Planning Committee on 13th of April 2022. I'm your Chair, Councillor Eileen Rag. Based on the decision of the Council to continue virtual meetings until the 11th of May this year, I would like to remind both members and members of the public attending or watching that this council has de delegated much of its decision-taking power to our senior officers. We will continue to adhere as closely as possible to the procedural rules detailed in our constitution. In the event of a break in the internet connection, please bear with us as we try to reconnect. After 15 minutes, if we're not able to reconnect, we will consider the meeting adjourned and reconvene at a later date. If you wish to comment, please raise your electronic hand and wait to be called. Any members of the public can view the agenda by visiting our website at www.eastdevon.gov.uk. We will now start the meeting by doing a roll call of committee members here present. So over to you, Wendy, to do the roll call, please. Thank you, Chair. So I'll start with you, Councillor Rag. Present. Thank you. Vice Chair, Councillor Chamberlain. Present. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Present. Thank you. Councillor Coleman. Councillor Davy. Present. Councillor Desaron. Good morning. Present. Thank you, Wendy. Good morning. Councillor Key's having problems coming um, in, so what I'll do is I'll help him after I've done the roll call. Councillor Lawrence. Present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. Present, Wendy. Thank, thank you. you. Councillor Skinner. Present. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Woodward. Okay, so we are core up for this morning's meeting, Chair. Back to you. Thank you, Wendy. Agenda item one, the running order for today's meeting and the speakers list can be viewed under agenda item one on pages four to five. Item two, minutes of the consultative meeting on the 16th March 2022, pages 6 to 11. If anyone has a comment on these meetings, or on these minutes, please raise your electronic hand. If there are no raised hands, I will take this as an indication that you are happy that the minutes are noted. There are no raised hands. Uh, item three, apologies, Wendy. Yes, we have a few apologies. We've got um, Councillor Bloxham, Councillor Bonetta, Councillor Gazard, Councillor Howe and Councillor Pook. And I understand that Councillor Woodward might be joining us um, a little later. OK, thank you. Thank you. Agenda uh, item four, declarations of interest. There'll be a roll call for any declarations. So do you, Wendy, for that? Thank you. Councillor Rag, if I can start with you. Yeah, um, <clears throat> item 9, I have attended the Queen's Drive delivery group meetings, not all of them, but some. Um, item 10, 212830, I was invited to attend the site visit by email, um, which I declined and explained the reasons for that in the meeting site visit should be um, arranged by officers. Uh, 21, 1546, full, um, I've had lobbying emails about that one. Um, similarly with 21, 1860, full uh, emails about that. Um, and I think that's all. If anything else comes up, I'll let you know. Thank you. Thank you. So, so items nine um, is was that uh, 
was that a personal interest? That's a personal interest. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Good morning, Wendy. Thank you. Um, just uh, application uh, number 211546. Sorry, my dog's going to bark. Um, email, um, lobbying email received. And item 211860 full. Also email received from the applicant. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Yeah, we received a letter this morning on uh, agenda item 12. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Thank you, Wendy. Yeah, similar to others, um, I've had... Um, uh, well, firstly, I'm an Exmouth Town Councillor, so that's relevant to item uh, 9 and 11. I'm, in fact, I'm the ward member for item 11. I'm also a member of the Queen's Drive Delivery Group, so that's relevant to item 9. And I've received lobbying emails um, on items 10, 21, uh, 28, 30. Um, Item 11, 21, and item 12, 21, So um, those are all personal interests. Thank you. Councillor De Serum. Yes, uh, thank you very much, Wendy. Um, as a district councillor, I declare the interest in item 9, the, the land at Queen's Drive, because obviously as district councillor, we have to declare that. Um, I am also the ward member for that. Um, I am also the ward member for agenda item 11, and I confirm that I met with the applicant about a year or two, a year and a half ago, um, because he was well, wanted to meet with us because the chair recommended it uh, based on the fact that it had now become part of my ward. It was originally part of the town ward and it became part of my ward. Um, and so I went out to see him and I met with him um, and, and saw what he was planning to do at that point. So that's that. Um, and I've been lobbied in respect of item 10, the Woodbury and Limston uh, uh, agenda item, I've been lobbied in respect to that, um, and I have also been uh, lobbied in respect of agenda item 12, the Barrack Farm um, item, so um, that's that's all me done for, for this morning. Thank you very much, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence. Um, just the, the usual um, items 10, 11 and, and 12 emails, um, but no other interest. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Pratt. No, no, Wendy, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Skinner. Um, yeah, obviously nine, and I'll ask uh, if I may, Shirley, please, because I would have thought it would be a blanket across all uh, members to uh, declare the interest in nine because the land is owned by East Devon District Council. So uh, I would imagine that one goes across the piece for everybody. Um, uh, ten, I've been lobbied on ten, uh, which is 212830. I've also had lobbying letter from um, 12, from 211860. Um, and that, uh, as far as I'm aware, I think that's it. Anything else? I'm sure I will bring it up at uh, the appropriate time. But that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Chair. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, item five, matters of urgency. There are none. Uh, six confidential exempt items, there are none. Uh, item seven planning appeal statistics, pages 12 to 23. Over to Chris Rose, please. Thank you, Chair. Morning, everybody. Yeah, so there's uh five dismissed appeals uh, on this agenda, uh, but two allowed appeals. The first one relates to uh, Underhill Close at the edge of uh, Limpston. Uh, that was a site for um a dwelling in the green wedge outside of the boundary uh, as uh, for Limston as defined in the neighbourhood plan. Um, so we recommended ref or we refused the application on the basis of the impact on the, the green wedge and the visual impact and it being contrary to the neighbourhood plan. But um, as you'll see in the agenda pack, the inspector disagreed. He felt it was more like infield development uh, with, with no harm to the green wedge, no harm to coalescence and accepting of the visual impact. Uh, and the second appeal that was allowed relates to um, Hol Shepherd's Huts, uh, the edge of Sidmouth that were in the AOMB, we felt had a, 
had a visual impact and uh, were in an uh, unsuitable location. But again, the inspector disagreed with us on that one. And the other uh, appeal listed there is an enforcement notice uh, where the inspector determined that it wasn't served correctly. Uh, so um, that uh, that was quashed, uh, but that simply means that we can reserve it again and address the fault that the inspector found. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, right, it makes you wonder why, why we have um, green wedges when, you know, it's overturned at appeal. Um, bit uh, frustrating, perhaps. Uh, right, uh, Jen, uh, could, yeah, could I, I just want to ask a question really from, from Mr. Rose on, I take it the one he was talking about is the one that says appeal, appeal invalid, is that, is that correct? No, there was a no. The, the appeal, no, the enforcement, no, no. There was another oh. one that was invalid. Uh, that was invalid because the basically uh, they took too long to appeal, and there's there's time scales in which you have to appeal, and they were outside of that time scale, so the inspector refused to uh, um, accept the appeal. Accept. Okay. Thank yeah. you very much. Thank you, chair. Thank you. Uh, agenda item eight: uh, local development order, land off Long Lane, pages twenty four to fifty four. Um, over to you, Chris Rose, to present the report, please. Thank you, Chair. Hopefully you can see my screen. Yeah. Yeah. Yes, so Good. So this, this report seeks uh, support for progressing uh, a local development order, an LDO, as it's known, for land off uh, Long Lane. It's near Exeter Airport. So you can see the, the airport, the runways here, yeah. Long Lane running down here, and it relates to this site. It's one of four sites uh, forming the Exeter and East Devon Enterprise Zone uh, designation, uh, within which uh, we've agreed to provide a simplified planning regime as part of that uh, Enterprise Zone offer. Uh, so an, an LDO is a local development order is a, an order by a local planning authority that grant, in effect grants planning permission for specific developments or classes of use on a site. So in effect, it's a speedy planning uh, a system, a regime. I suppose I could equate it to uh, if we were to grant this local development order, it would give people sort of permitted development rights to carry out works on this site without necessarily having to go through the full planning system with us. Or another comparison might be, you know, we're granting outline consent here for a number of uh, uses and development, and then they'd only have to come in with certain uh, details through a speedy planning system following that up and outlined in the documents with the development order are the sort of parameters that we that the site should be developed within. So if it gets developed within those parameters, then uh, they can go on. Uh, they won't necessarily need any further consent from us and they know that they can go and invest in the site. Um, so it, it's to uh, encourage and facilitate development in uh, this simplified uh, planning regime. And we've been working with the, or. Francis, who's who's here on the call, who's been leading on this, has been working with the uh, the, the landowner on the site to um, to bring this to bring this forward. And it relates to this brown area of land uh, here, so you can see its relationship to the runway, uh, Long Lane, and then the A30 that runs down here, and the business park by by Exeter. Uh, and there's the there's the the photos at open field at the moment. So it follows on from uh, strategy 18 and the local plan, which designates the majority, majority of this site, slightly smaller area, majority for employment uses in the local plan. And this is to facilitate those employment uses coming forward. The, uh, slightly only bizarrely, the allocation in the local plan doesn't go to the site field boundaries. Um, so obviously to make this LDO logical, it covers the whole of this field here up to its site boundaries. A bit of an anomaly with the local plan not, not doing that and that allocation. So it would allow um, 26,000 square metres maximum of development, uh, sort of office uses, B2, B8, and then, as you'll see in the report, some ancillary uh, uses to support, support those. Uh, and you can see the sort of three different zones of development that will be proposed with landscaping around the edge and drainage uh, to the site. So the idea is that um, if they comply with the uh, conditions that are outlined in this LDO, they know they can go ahead and develop uh, out the site. 
And alongside the LDO, there's the, this map and there's a design code. And that design code outlines to developers how they should go about developing the sites, complying with these zones. And there's also a parameters set out in the LDO in relation to unit sizes and their heights and designs. So you can see that those parameters then set the sort of uh, framework, if you like, for which if development complies with it, then it can go ahead on the site through this through this speedy regime. And it gives those investors confidence that if they, they know exactly what to comply with and they bring that forward, then, then they can go ahead and develop. And those parameters also set out the mitigation that's needed. So in terms of the landscaping and the ecology, so for example, all the development would, would need to be BRIAM excellent or very good. There'd need to be solar panels on the building, travel plan provided and electric charging points. So you can see they, they're aware of all of that uh, up front. There's been informal or consultation with Devon County Council as the Highways Authority about uh, improvement works that they're currently doing to, to Long Lane to, to service the site. Um, there may be some applications for compliance that uh, the developer would need to uh, submit to us, but that would be a sort of 28 day speedy process uh, just to confirm things such as landscaping schemes. And the idea is that this has a 10 year lifetime to it. So uh, in terms of the next step, we've got a draft LDO and design code and that uh, provided, finalized, it's in front of you. And what we're asking for today is members agreement uh, to go continue down this route and to go out to consultation on those documents to the, to the public. And that consultation period would be 28 days. We would then receive and consider those uh, representations, amend the order and LDO if necessary. Uh, and then it would come back to planning committee in its final form for you as members to, uh, uh, well, uh, hopefully uh, adopt or, or otherwise. Uh, so therefore, the, the recommendation is to is to allow uh, ourselves, particularly Francis, to go ahead, finalise this LDO uh, uh, and go out to consultation. So that's the recommendation before you. And Francis Wadsley, who's been dealing, uh, leading on this, is uh, in on this Zoom call today. If you've got any particular detailed questions about uh, the LDO um, or the design coding or the framework that go alongside it. But as I say, the recommendation is committee approve this, that we proceed down this road and that we go out in the first instance to public consultation before it comes back to you uh, in its final form. Thank you. Thank you. Um, welcome to the meeting, Francis Wadley. Um, now, does any, anybody have any questions? I see one hand up from Councillor Skinner. Do you have a question? Uh, well, I, um, I, I do have sort of uh, several sort of questions in, in some respect. But do you want do you want to ask specific questions now, or do you want to move into the debate, or can I ask you how you want to do with this, Chair? Well, this is, this is well. Um, do you have any specific questions now? So that might help cut down the debate, save time. Oh, well, I, I don't know that I have. I just said us move into the debate, really. Right. Um, I see no other hands up. So, um, right, would you like to yeah. kick off then, yeah. Kevin? Yeah. Get your hands up. Uh, absolutely. And, and can I say that the work that's been done here, I've read this sort of... <laughs> Uh, uh, not only once, I can't always take everything in first time. I've got to do things two or three times and take it in. And this is a real positive step forward uh, for me in the way that we're working in the authority on moving with an LDO. Um, just if I could quick fire some quick questions, if to Chris or Francis, whoever, have we got, have we got one of these in place at the moment anywhere else? So I'll answer that. So not, not in terms of development on a particular site, but we have got an LDO uh, in place uh, in this part of the district that allows people to carry out various um, infrastructure works in association yeah. with the energy plants without needing planning permission, yeah. but nothing site specific. This would be the right. first. So, so, right, great. Thank, thanks, Chris, for that, because it, it, it's really quite important. And so this being the first, what we, what we have to absolutely make sure of, and I'm sure there will be many members uh, of, of this particular uh, committee who will be thinking, hang on, how much, uh, how much are we giving up uh, as far as a planning committee uh, is concerned and things happening that may, we may not want to see happen? And that would be the fear of, of where they go. But 
absolutely is the report laid out in such a way that it's really quite specific about what is and what cannot uh, be agreed upon for these um, for these LDOs, LDOs to go forward. And I'm 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 taken with the confidence that the way this is set out, and well done to you, Francis, if, if I'm sorry, I've never met you before, but um, well done to you in the way that you've worked this through and, and it's going out to consultation. And one of the questions I was going to ask, Chair, was that in which part is a public consultation in, in involved in this in a document such as this? But Chris answered that because he said that once, once if we agree to do this, that the, then the order goes out goes out to public consultation uh, and then there's that feedback from that and there may be some amendments to that to come back to this this particular committee again on on the whole um chair and through you uh, to committee members i'm really excited about this and i think this is a real step forward in the way that we can maneuver and move much faster with development particularly in commercial developments when the commercial ground moves very quickly and we have to be on our toes to be able to move within that that network because that's where business and i believe commercial business is going to get tougher and harder for local authorities to get people coming to their areas to invest in their areas to create jobs and, and job creation going forward so for me i'm i'm absolutely um very, very supportive of this, um, and and in principle, um, I'm I'm hoping members will go. And and I'm Jerry, I don't know if you need something anybody to move it, but if anybody's got to, I don't know that you do in this particular case. Not a decision making thing particularly, but if you do want to move it, I'm very much behind it, and I will be supporting it. And I welcome any other members in in uh, adding anything to to this particular report. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, Councillor Skinner, Councillor Desarum. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, I think having read the report and having uh, heard Mr. Rose's comments, um, I think the public, when it goes out to consultation, the public will be uh, very reassured, uh, particularly when you look at item 3.9 on page 27, that sustainability is the key aspect of the development. Um, and what Mr. Rose described as being, this would also give the public, the investors confidence. So I think it serves a very good dual purpose. And for that reason, uh, like Councillor Skinner, I too will be, um, happy to support such a proposal. Thank you very much, Chair. So are you, Councillor Skinner, I take it that you were moving the um, yep. consultation to go out? Yep. And yep. you said Councillor Desarum? Yes, I'll be, I'll be happy to yes. second it about. Sorry, Chair, um, may, I, may I interrupt? There are yeah. two elements to the recommendation, yes. that of the consultation and delegation that's within that you're recommendation. Right. Yes, you're right. Yeah. Which is why we yeah. need a proper mover and a seconder, please. So are we taking the two as one? I'm yes. I'm happy I'm happy to do that. Yes, if yeah. Councillor Starm is happy to support that. Likewise, absolutely. Uh, and that's in order, Mrs. Shaw. <laughs> it's no good nodding. Yes, it is, Chair. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. Um Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, I, I've read this report as well, and I think it's fantastic. I mean, we, we, we're building thousands and thousands of houses, but we're, we're woefully short of job creation. And, and, and the, this type of opportunity is where we should be looking to, to develop East Devon, to, 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 to make it more sustainable and ha have people having jobs on their doorstep. And I, I, I just think the whole thing is fantastic and, and well done to everybody concerned. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Lawrence. I agree with you there. Uh, Councillor Chamberlain, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, just a declaration that this is actually in my ward and also um, a 220013, Wendy. Sorry, I missed that one. But uh, back onto this subject, yeah, I agree with what's been said. I don't need to repeat it. Um, I support it as well going forward. So thank you very much. Thank you. I see no other hands up, so it's over to you, Mrs Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members. The recommendation of, for the report, as moved and seconded by Councillor Skinner and Councillor Desarum, is that it's recommended approval of the formal public consultation process for the LDO on land off Long Lane and recommend delegation of authority to the development manager to finalise and agree the consultation draft of the LDO. The members, please, when your name is called, would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion 
to uh, recommend those, <laughs> those elements, whether you're against the recommendation or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. I'm just wondering if we could do the voting system rather than the roll call for this one. What do you, what do you think? Well, I think it makes sense. I mean, it's not a planning application, is it? Thank you, Chair. It was just that previous decision of the committee was that they wished to do roll calls. But as this is a, a, a different um, yeah. matter, then yes, please, members, press your green tick if you're in support of the recommendation. Press your red cross if you're against the recommendation or raise your electronic hand if you wish to indicate you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Just waiting for the votes to come in. So we have eight votes in support, no abstentions and no uh, votes against. So that is. Thank you, Wendy. Um, now we move to agenda item nine. Uh, application 220067, full application land at Queen's Drive, Exmouth. And I didn't thank Frances for her attendance and all the input she's had into um, that document. So thank you very much, um, Frances. Right, Land at Queen's Drive. Um, I'd like to welcome Jude Latter, uh, objector, and memory supporting. And here I must declare an interest, I think a personal interest, um, in that um, it's an unusual one. Anne Membry, if it's the same one, I think it, it must be, um, was witness to uh, a hit and run incident where a car, another car driver, hit my car, which I wasn't in at the time, and was a witness um, to that event. So <laughs> a bit different, I suppose. I'd like to also welcome Jerry Mills, who's applying on behalf of East Devon District Council and Ward Member Nick Hookway. So over to you, Mr. Rose, please. Chair, can I just very buffed in, please? I'm very, very sorry that I've only just joined the meeting because I have great difficulty in getting in. Yes, I understand. That's all right. Welcome to the meeting, Councillor Key. Nice to see you again. You haven't changed very much since last time you were here. <laughs> Chair, uh, Chair yes. may I ask if Councillor Key has any declarations to make before we oh, get into yes. this next yeah. item? No, no, I don't at Thank all. You. None whatsoever. None whatsoever. Thank you. Thank okay. you. Thank you. Right. Over to you, Chris Rose, to present your report, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so this uh, relates to plan application on land at Queen's Drive in Exmouth, uh, and it's for the permanent use of the land and building and structures for entertainment, recreation and leisure. Uh, it's an East Devon District Council application and there's an applica ap application and there's been an objection received, hence the application is in front of you today. And uh, I expect members are aware of the history of this site. So a temporary one year consent for the current uses and the uses being applied for today was granted in 2017 and then in 2018, uh, having been in, in place for a year, temporary consent was granted for a further 36 months. Temporary consent having been granted previously to enable the council to go away and, and work up more, uh, if needed, a more permanent solution for the redevelopment of the wider um, area. Uh, so you can see uh, off the seafront here the site, uh, and then we've got these different zones on the site. So the, the sort of red or the, the pink on the screen is a food and drink zone. The green is a children's play area and the blue is an event, event space. And then you can see various access to the site uh, off the road. Um, and then these are images of the uses are on the site at the moment. There's little huts, there's play provision for, for children, uh, and then there's event space that gets, uh, that, that, that takes yeah. place. So um, the, these uses have been taking place on the site uh, already since 2017, and this application is simply to make them, that make them permanent going forward. And in principle, this has support from the local plan under strategy 22 for the wider regeneration uh, of this area. And uh, as I've mentioned, it's already been grant, uh, granted on the site twice, albeit temporarily. Uh, and again, this carrying on in the meantime is acceptable from a planning perspective uh, permanently uh, or well, so it's been applied for permanently. And that's acceptable from the planning uh, uh, 
point of view, uh, although, I, although we're obviously aware that there are potential uh, longer term uh, aspirations for the site that, that will be dealt with outside of this application. Uh, in terms of the uh, visual impact uh, of the site, uh, conservation area is up here uh, uh, to the north, so it's not in the conservation area, and this site is set down uh, uh, from that uh, conservation area, and you can see the, the levels changes from the, 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 the properties up there in the distance. There's limits on the heights of the buildings. You'll see there's conditions on that and they've been complied with in the past and there's not considered, given the flat nature of the site and the uses proposed, no wider uh, visual impact. In terms of access, the site's well located. It's on the seafront. There's parking nearby. People can walk and cycle to it uh, and there's no objection from, from Devon County as the highway authority. In terms of uh, amenity, uh, there's been no uh, objection letters from local residents uh, and uh, no complaints that we in planning have received uh, from the operation over the last couple of years of the, the current uses. But environmental health, as with the previous applications, are reckoned, uh, recommended hours restrictions to uh, no later than 11 p.m. at night. Uh, and there will also be required various licensing applications which can controls and control any noise elements uh, from the site. And the Environmental Health Officer has advised that that's best being covered by the, the licensing regime rather than planning. But we have got a number of other conditions on there to protect immunity, including uh, controls of lighting uh, and lighting rigs, uh, details to be submitted to us. <laughs> We, we have, though, you will see, though, that there is one uh, objection that we've received from the adjacent bowling club. They have no, uh, no objection to the principle of the development or the uses, but they have experienced concerns uh, from or impacts from the temporary uses on this part of the site from a, from a generator that has been used at times. Again, I think that as it's a mobile generator, it's not necessarily something we can control in planning, but in any case, it would need uh, consent under the licensing <laughs> regime. So they can control that through that and its location. And also uh, East Devon District Council as the operators and owners of the site, I think can, uh, the um, Jerry Mills is here for, on behalf of the applicant and can take those concerns from the bowling club on board and make sure that in the future, if there is any generator needed, it's not put on the boundary with the bowling club and, and to the point that it disturbs their, uh, their, their activities there. The bowling club also have requested that there be some parking in the area safeguarded for uh, their bowling club. Again, that's considered, I don't think that's justified in planning terms. That's outside of the remit uh, of, of planning partly due to the busy nature of Exmouth in the summer that there's this high demand for parking. But again, the applicant is here uh, if they want to address that or do something uh, outside of the planning regime with, uh, uh, with the bowling club. So in conclusion, uh, it, it, it's appropriate in planning terms to continue those uses on the site. There's obviously uh, tourism benefits from uh, attracting people to Exmouth uh, and, and giving them these, these facilities. Uh, there's no visual harm from the proposal. Uh, and it's considered that those concerns of the bowling club can be controlled through the licensing regime that will have to come forward for each of those uh, events, uh, or if the applicant uh, wants to take that forward with the uh, bowling club outside of the planning, then they're, they're, they're welcome to do so. So in light of that, the application is recommended for approval with the same conditions that have been put on the, uh, the two previous applications. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, could I just... Um perhaps make a suggestion that the bowling club being concerned about parking, um, it, it's a possibility that they may consider applying for a permit. Um, would that be permissible, perhaps? Anybody know? I don't know the answer to that. I know, I know you can, as, as local residents, apply for permits in car parks. Yeah. I, don't, I, I honestly don't know what the situation what, is uh, with, with, with this particular area. No, whether a sports club or sports organisation could apply for permits and pay as per, um, you know, residential permits. It, but that's something they might like to consider and, and contact parking about. Um, right. Now we've got objectors. Uh, Jude, Lat Jude Latter, please. Jude Latter? Would you like to speak? You have three minutes. I think you're on mute. Unmute. 
Okay, can you hear me now? Yes, that's we can. it. Yes, thank you. Can. Right. Okay. okay, thank you, thank you very much. Um, I'm going to start at the end, if I may, about the parking. Um, first of all, I'm first of all, I'd like to say that we do we do welcome this because it brings visitors to Exmouth and, and it's it's really important. But there's aspects of it that we think could be very much improved. On the parking, I was not asking for special consideration for Madeira members. I was pointing out the fact that having taken away the temporary car parking, Queen's Drive is full to bursting. In fact, throughout the year, at 11.30 yesterday, there were two spaces. Um, it, will get, it gets worse in the summer. And the picture you have up on the screen shows in fact the extra parking spaces that were being used on that temporary site. I mean, the, the principles of the temporary site were excellent, but I saw it used maybe half a dozen times. There's also a sign up there now saying it's private property, but that's another matter. My, my concern there was that my members, they pay, they, they, they have a quick, we're not asking for special permits. We're, we're not doing that. But our concern is that visitors to, to our club have difficulty parking. And clearly, visitors to the, the, the attractions have parking. And it was just a suggestion that maybe the council should reconsider opening the temporary space, not least for the thousands of pounds it would generate in revenue, which Exmouth could do with. So that was the parking one. It, it wasn't, I mean, I did point out that, yes, the, you know, 60-year-old bowlers, visitors, having to come back from, from there. But it wasn't a special consideration for us. It was a general one. So I just wanted to be clear on that. I wasn't asking for sort of special favours. Um, our, our main objective, and mention has been made of the, the diesel generator. Um, the diesel generator is a mobile one, and there should certainly be... Um, standards of emissions. The situation we had last year was that um, it would start up during the day because it wouldn't be on first thing in the morning, for example. But when it started up, there was black smoke that you could see and, and you, you could see it rising above our fence. You could also smell it and taste it. Now, as you know, diesel generators release particulate matter, CO2 and nitrogen oxide, and they are all dangerous. Now, if you're on the bowling green and you can actually taste that in the air, then those emissions must be very high. So, so our concern is that any diesel generator uh, must be checked for the lowest possible emissions. I know sometimes they, they put covers around them, but also it needs to be sighted well away, both from, from our club, which gets most of it, but presumably from young children whose lungs are rather, you know, are, are, are less uh, developed than ours. And so the, the emissions from the diesel generator is a major concern. Now, you said you'll talk about it through licensing. I don't know enough about how the council works, but that I want all That's council members to realise um, how dangerous that is. And the only other thing was the noise from the, the, um, the fairground, um, the hurdy-gurdy sound, and it's a question that if speakers, if they can at least be turned away facing the seafront, but we don't get, they, they exceed um, the current levels in terms of decibel levels, and somebody could come down and check that, but possibly you could get that sorted before it's all set up, so that the sound does not, as you can see, you can see from the diagram, you know, that any sound coming over, it, it's horrendous. We, we want the development, but we feel that these things really must be addressed, uh, not only for our members, visitors, but for members to the site. Thank you very much for listening. Thank you. Um, well, the Environmental Health Officer recommended approval, but um, back to you, Mr Rose, could we um, perhaps turn that up? You, you alluded to that when you gave your presentation. Yeah, so uh, I think there's well, there's two issues here that they are matters that um, environmental health can yeah. deal with in terms of noise and the pollution. Um, but I think more fundamental to that, I think it's uh, it, it's an issue for the licensing for each of those events to cover. And I, I suppose actually more fundamental than that, you know, East Devon are the owners and will run this site. And uh, Jerry Mills is here and hopefully you can take that on board. And when those events do take place, make sure those speakers are turned away from the bowling club and the um, and the generators are put in a, 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 a more appropriate position. In planning terms, I think the best we could do would be to put an informative on to advise the applicant 
uh, of that if that's something that members felt was required. But otherwise, I think it's covered by other legislation. Thank you. And um, Chris, on your regarding the parking, we appreciate the Queen's Drive parking space is, do get quite congested during the uh, busy months. But there is the Mayor, Mayor Road car parking. Could you identify that on on the photo, please? I don't Which think it's 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 off it's off this plan, isn't it? It's it's off there. Yeah, it's it's largely um, empty, even in the high season. So I, I know it's a few steps away from Madeira Bowling Club, and people with disabilities might have um, problems. But just to, to point out that that is something that's been raised a number of times at various committees at East Devon. It is underused at Car Park. Right, uh, Anne Membry, welcome to the meeting. Um, you have three minutes. I believe you're supporting. There was a, uh, an error, I think, said had you down as an objector and a supporter. So could you confirm your supporting, please? And you're currently on mute. So if you could do star six, we'll be able to hear you. Okay. Is that better? <laughs> Hello? Yes. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. I'm a supporter. I'm not an objector. Yeah. Thank you. Okay. I, while I fully support this plan in application for permanent use of land, buildings and structures for the purpose of entertainment, recreation and leisure, I would like to see more outdoor attractions on the site which are suitable for all generations to enjoy. I think the use of some of the space at the moment is a waste of space as it resembles a sand pit covered with tables and benches. The playground is obviously popular with young children but there are no attractions for older children. Some families who live in Exmouth have told me that they go to other seaside towns on the other opposite side of the river as they say there is a lack of outdoor attractions in Exmouth. And some visitors who have been to Exmouth have said they will not come back because of the lack of outdoor attractions. I have been informed that there is a new East Devon District Council officer called Jerry Mills whose position comes under the head in place and prosperity. If this application for permanent use of land is approved, hopefully he will have the opportunity to develop this site with more attractions. And I hope he is better at understanding the understanding of economics and the councillors and officers of the previous East Devon District Council administration, who told me Exmouth had to be made more financially viable. If shot in a popular, shot in a popular fun park, which had a tenant who was paying rent to the council and spending over £100,000 on temporary attractions and paying Wayne Hemingway thousands of pounds to speak to the public and get him to say what the council ha had already decided was a complete waste of East Devon taxpayers' money by councillors and officers at East Devon District Council. Exmouth is a lovely place to come and enjoy the beach when the sun is shining. But when the sun isn't shining, there needs to be more outdoor attraction, attractions which can be enjoyed by all generations. And so I fully support this plan and application for permanent use of the whole of the land, which was the former fun park, to be used for entertainment, recreation and leisure. Thank you. Thank you, Anne. Um, well... You, you mentioned um, Jerry Mills. He's not been on in post very long, but he comes with a considerable and impressive experience. So I think you can say he's probably a go-getter. Um, I, I hope that doesn't offend <laughs> Jerry. But um, now, and, and also um, with the current thinking and the current administration, I'm sure that, you know, we'll be listening to people and um, hopefully try to fulfill um, what they they are asking for. So thank you. Um, Jerry. welcome to the committee. Um, and you have three minutes to present, please. Uh, ch Chair, really, I, I can't add anything other than what has already been presented by, by, by my colleague, Chris Rose. Um, I welcome the comments and, and the um, we will deal with the licensing issues um, uh, in regard to the bowling club. Um, I do welcome the comments uh, on, on the, the 
the temporary uses. And we are looking very, very carefully uh, with the Queen's Drive Delivery Group to bring forward recommendations for which we've set out a timetable. Um, and and it's, it's quite a punishing timetable. The group recently had a workshop uh, at Ocean, and I don't want to reveal the content of that just yet. That will come forward in a transparent process at our next meeting. Um, but to say that we made considerable progress, I think, would be would be a fair assessment. That's certainly the feedback that members have given me, uh, Chair. That, that would be all I would have to say. Thank you. Thank you very much, Mr Mills. Um, now we go to the ward member who's also chair of the Queen's Drive Delivery Group, um, Councillor Nick Cookway, please. Uh, you have five minutes, Nick. Thank you, Chair. Um, I hope not to need five minutes. Uh, good morning to uh, you, committee members. Um, I'm um, um, hoping that you will approve this application. Uh, we need to carry on with these uh, activities that we have on site that have proved very popular. We now have traders who are uh, returning and wishing to continue to trade and benefit uh, the, uh, uh, the town and uh, as an attractive area. We need to compete with other towns uh, uh, within the the um, in other side of the river, really. So we need to consider what other attractions we need to to uh, have, and that is uh, something that will happen over a long term process. Uh, developments have been slightly delayed. COVID has had a big impact upon uh, the tourism industry and in confidence of the tourism industry. And this permanent application will, I think, uh, give uh, evidence that we are committed to providing a decent attractions. Uh, on Exmouth Seafront. And finally, of course, this summer, we're looking forward to the Queen's Platinum Jubilee and this uh, approval uh, will uh, allow us to carry on and provide very popular attractions for people on Exmouth Seafront. Thank you very much, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hookway. I've been asked by members of the public as well uh, what East Devon are doing for the um, Jubilee. And apart from planting oak trees there was nothing that I could find so that that's um useful to point them in that direction and um, right uh right now we go to committee um but the ward member councillor Desarum would like to speak um councillor Desarum would you like to speak now absolutely chair uh, as, as we're in committee session uh, that's most most gracious of you um, and I'd like to start off by thanking uh, both speakers, our earlier speakers, uh, Jude Latour and Anne Membry. Um, I felt they put very um, articulate cases um, as members of the public. And I think it's really good that we always uh, try to listen to the members of the public. And um, clearly they made a very good contribution. And I note from listening to their contributions that parking has been identified as an issue for the site if, as you rightly said, Chair, you cannot get to the Mayor Road car park. Now, um, I don't wish to drag up past uh, previous things, but members will note that I was personally never in favour of grassing over the site, the temporary site for fitness, uh, and turning it into the fitness site. Um, I wasn't in favour of that because I did see uh, that we would need uh, to have parking in the future, but we are where we are with that site, uh, uh, Chair, and I don't want to recount ancient, ancient history because I do believe in going forward in a positive manner. And I think Councillor Hookway, my fellow ward councillor, summed it up with talking about the need to provide decent attractions on the seafront. And I think if the council can do that, it will certainly help lots of residents. And so, as Mr. Rose has pointed out, what we have before us today is acceptable in planning terms. Councillor Hookway has touched on the tourism benefits. And we've satisfied to a certain extent the bowling club's problems um, because licensing will deal with the generator and other associated issues. So for that reason, for those reasons, Chair, I'm more than happy to propose uh, approval of the recommendation in line with the officer's report. So I will now go out to committee and look for a seconder. Thank you so much, Chair. Right, is there a seconder, please? Yep, I'll second, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Davy. Uh, your turn to speak. Okay, thank you. Um, yeah, I just want to. Yeah, um, uh, Councillor De Serum has been very gracious uh, in uh, not wanting to open that can of worms again. Um, but I do have to say about the temporary car park, it was only ever that. It was a temporary car park. It, it has been in use as a, a builder's. Uh, site during uh, some of the uh, the demolition and uh, 
well, more demolition than construction there, I think. Um, but um, it, it, that land has always been designated for leisure use. Um, <clears throat> and uh, so it was never more than a temporary car park. It was a bit of land that was used for a brief period for parking and has now reverted, um, as it should do, to leisure use. Um, so I, while I have some sympathies uh, with the uh, the bowling club uh, on the parking issue, I think the way to cut down the need for parking is get fewer cars coming along there, and that means better um, public transport, a, a better shuttle from the station, and so on. Um, and I'm I'm a bit puzzled by this generator, um, and I, I would have thought the way to uh, to to not have a need for a generator is have adequate mains power there. Um, and I think that might be, if it's not there already, is something we should consider um, installing there um, if it's not already um, provided. I'm not quite sure why a generator is needed. Um, but as been pointed out, that's an issue for licensing. Um, same with noise. Uh, that is an issue for environmental health, but hopefully um, the noise from the uh, the attractions will will not be uh, disruptive to the uh, local residents. Um, and I do do have sympathies there as well. Um, I'd just like to say to to Anne Membry, yes, uh, the it's frequently been mentioned in Queen's Drive Delivery Group, um, to which she's welcome to come along, actually, because most of her comments would, would be more relevant there. Um, and um, we frequently mention the need for attractions for older children. So we, we do understand that one, and we have taken that one on board, and I'm sure Jerry has got that one on his radar as well. Um, and other than that, I'm, I'm very happy to see this go forward, and I'm... I'm pleased that I think one of the things we've actually got right in Exmouth uh, is is going to be uh, made of a, a kind of permanent temporary feature whichever it is thank you <laughs> thank you Councillor Davy. um could I go back to either Jerry Mills or Chris Rose um to ask about the need for a temp for a generator because presumably the cricket club is on main supply. They're happy to come in there. I, I'm not aware of what the services are on the site, but I can look into that. Uh, and you, we Jerry. can assess the provision thank of power supply for the site. Okay, thank you very much. Councillor Skinner, anything to add? Uh, just a quickie, I think through uh, Mrs. Shaw, uh, at this point, when a, when a speaker spoke earlier, so I declare my interest as the previous uh, regeneration chairman of for the Exmouth and the Exmouth Seafront. Um, so I just make that point now, really. I, I think it's partly pointless, but I just thought I'd make it. It was, it was raised earlier regarding um, uh, of the future, the previous administration. I'd make that point. Thank you. I have nothing to add. Thank, thank you. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Um, right, there are no other hands raised. So can we go over to you, Mrs. Shaw, please? Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you have them. The a recommendation to approve subject to conditions as set out in the report. When your name is called, please would you indicate whether you're in support of the motion to recommend approval, against the motion to recommend approval, or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Councillor Brown. Yes, support. Councillor Chamberlain. Support, thank you. Councillor Davy. Support approval, thank you. Councillor De Serum. Support approval, thank you. Councillor Key. Support approval. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval, thank you, Wendy. Councillor Pratt. Support approval, thank you. Counts thank you. Councillor Skinner. Support approval. Councillor Rag. Support approval. Thank you. That's unanimous in support, so that's recommended for approval. Thank you, and thank you to the speakers. Um, that was very positive. Um, right, agenda item 10, application 212830, full application, Pine Hollow, Hallam Road, Exmouth, page 68. Um, and like to welcome Oliver Westray, 
Keegan Faraday and the ward members, Ben Ingham and Jeff Young. So over to you, Chris, to present your report, please. You're on mute, Chris. Oh, there we go. All right, sorry. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, Pine Hollow, Hullam Road in Exmouth, and it's an application for change of use of, uh, of a garden to, uh, there we go, to, uh, uh, for two clamping for, for camping, and it's before committee because there's uh, ward member support. The site's outside the built-up area boundary uh, in the countryside, uh, but close to the, the pebble bed heaths. So this is the layout for the site. So we've got the, the dwelling, we've got an outbuilding, two pods uh, and car parking. And this is the aerial. So we've got Exmouth down here uh, to, the, to the south uh, west of this screen. So you can see the site here. And this pink blob on the screen is the area designated for the, the pebble bed heaths as the uh, special protection area, which I'll, I'll mention in a bit. So again, the, the layout for the site, this shows the visibility displays uh, at the access um, and then we've got the uh, outbuilding uh, there, the elevations of that. You'll see the photos of in the middle minute for uh, hot tub and storage. Uh, and, and here are the photos. So down the side, access to this area of land at the rear. So parking on this part of the site. And then we go into the rear of the site. You can see the, uh, the outbuilding there. And then you can see the two, uh, the two glamping pods and then looking back towards the, towards the house. So you'll see in the report that uh, Natural England have objected to the application due to the close proximity to and the impact on the pebble bed heaths. Uh, but you'll see that Devon County is the highway authority are happy with the access arrangements and the visibility at the uh, at this junction. Uh, so there's no highway safety concern. Uh, and there are 26 letters of support for the application. In terms of the principle of development, um, there's local plan policies that support tourism generally, uh, but the more detailed policies talk about uh, supporting tourism uh, in the built up area boundary or at the edge of settlements or in locations that are uh, have safe walking distance to a range of services and facilities or it allows conversions, but that this isn't a conversion. In this case, given the distance uh, on, on busy roads without pavements uh, to those services and facilities, it's not considered that there's uh, support in principle for, for this use. But more fundamental to that in the report um, is, the, is the issue of the impact on the pebble bed heaths. So as you saw from that screen, we're, we're just uh, less than 100 metres from the edge of the pebble bed heaths. And strategy 47 of the local plan deals with that. And it's a policy that follows on from the Southeast Devon European site mitigation strategy, which is a strategy that's been worked up by East Devon and the adjoining authorities in partnership with uh, Natural England to ensure that we have a policy that protects the pebble bed heaths. So it's a special area for conservation. So we've got a particular duty to, to uh, protect that area. And in particular, we've got a duty to try and reduce its use and direct um, other uh, direct people away from it to prevent harm to ecology. So in light of that, uh, members will be aware that on, on various residential applications within 10 kilometers of it, we collect financial contributions that go into a pot to mitigate the development and their impact on the pebble bed heaths. And we do that in partnership with uh, with, with uh, Exeter, Team Bridge, and particularly Natural England. So those, those, that, that policy and that approach has been worked up with Natural England support. And that's led to strategy 47 of the local plan. Uh, and in there, you'll see uh, that there's, there's uh, in the, the sporting or in the policy, there says that there'll be no residential development. Uh, and this is includes holiday accommodation granted within 400 meters of the pebble bed heaths. And the reason for that is to ensure that uh, people don't go on and overly use the, the pebble bed heaths and that it's easier to divert people that live further away to other places away from the pebble bed heaths than it is for people that live uh, close to the site. So with the support of, of Natural England, the policy, the strategy is no uh, residential development within 400 metres of the pebble bed heaths. And this is, this is a lot closer than that. It's uh, just under 100 metres away. Uh, hence the support for the refusal from, from Natural England. I've also put in the report a number uh, uh, quoted from appeal decision uh, that for a very similar holiday use scheme, 
where uh, the inspector confirms the, the approach from the mitigation strategy from the partnership and strategy 47, and that we shouldn't have houses close to the, or any sort of housing uh, close to the pebble bed heaths. Uh, and that, that doesn't matter whether it's holiday use or permanent residential use, we treat them the same. Uh, and it doesn't matter about what features there may be between the, uh, the site and the pebble bed heaths, because I think the case that were quoted, um, I think you had to cross a stream and cross a road to get to the pebble bed heaths. But the inspector said, well, yeah. those sort of uh, obstacles don't, don't matter. And I know in this case, the applicant is of the view that because there's a busy junction between this site and the pebble bed heaths, that that will restrict the, uh, the access onto the pebble bed heaths. So... It's contrary to the approach that the, the council are taking and strategy 47 in terms of allow, or not, or the, the policy approach of not allowing residential development uh, this close to the pebble beds and that's been backed up on appeal. So you'll see from the report that's the main concern about this close location uh, to the pebble beds and the impact from that. But there's no other harm uh, to residential amenity of surrounding residents. As I say, there's no highway safety impact. There's no impact on trees, no wider, wider visual impact from the scheme. So, uh, uh, so there's the main issue, fundamental concern, I said, is this objection from Natural England and the coast location to the Pebble Bed Heath Special Protection Area and, and the duty we've got to protect that and that through partnership with the other authorities in Natural England, we've come up with this policy approach of no development within 400 metres, no residential development. And this site is within that 400 metres. Um, so it's clearly contrary to that policy and that approach, which has been supported on appeal. So in light of that, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Uh, right, now, welcome to the supporters. Uh, Oliver Westray, welcome to the meeting. You have three minutes. Hi there, nice to meet you. My name is Oliver Westray. I'm, just for clarity, I am the next door neighbour, so I live um, adjacent to Pine Hollow, a house called Pine Ridge. So I have um, my gardens, the only uh, property and garden that abuts the site. Um, yeah, from my perspective, um, the applicant has always been very um, collaborative with me, taught me through their designs. Obviously, it's, it's now up and built, as you can see, and there is no impact at all on my property. I can hardly see it. So um, I, I'm you know, very happy with it because, it, as I said, it adjoins my land. And no, have no complaints at all about the visual aspects or um, noise impact at all. So very happy from that perspective. Um, yeah, just just obviously from a tourist and local business perspective, I think it's it's a great idea. It's you know pods and glamping and eco tourism. Um, and I know from from friends who are always looking for um, places to stay near me, they can never find any um, any decent holiday accommodation so there's definitely a, a demand for it um yeah in terms of obviously the, the, the key point is the pebble beds heath uh, you know I, I never walk across the road because it's extremely dangerous road i always wear high visibility um i use the pebble beds a lot and it's it's hardly used at all i've never seen any tourists there at all um when friends come to stay you know, they Google TripAdvisor, and if you look on TripAdvisor, you know, within Exmouth, Pebble Beds Heath doesn't even come up. So the, the fact that it's an impact from tourists, I, that's, for me, is in reality non, nonsensical. Um, the, you know, they want to go and see the beaches and world of country life. They, they don't go onto the Pebble Beds Heath. So, you know, understand the, the, the policy, but I think in reality that there's going to be, you know, hardly any impact from the Pebble Beds Heath. I'm more concerned about the BMX track that is in the Pebble Beds Heath and the huge amount of mountain bikers and um, uh, BMXs you get on the Pebble Beds Heath. I think that's more of an impact on, on the Pebble Beds Heath. So, yeah, from, from my perspective, very supportive of it. Um, it's not going to have an impact on, on uh, Woodbury Common Pebble Beds Heath. And, um, yeah, I'm very much as, as the... Uh, the most local um, resident to the uh, the site. I'm I'm very supportive of this, and I, I think there's a there's a need for it for for tourism in this locality. So that's uh, pretty much me. Hopefully wrapped up within the three minutes I've got. 
Thank you, Mr. Westray. Um, now the agent, uh, Keegan Faraday, welcome to the meeting. You have three minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, good morning, councillors. Um, just to confirm, so this application is a resubmission. Um, it was resubmitted on the basis that officers advised the original application, um, which was submitted in April last year, be withdrawn subject to further ecology input. The officer's objection to the proposal stems solely from the proximity of Pines Hollow to the Pebble Bed Heath, whereby they consider that this small scale tourism provision may have a significant impact on the nearby habitat. We, of course, dispute this. Due to the proximity to the pebble beds, the planning department is duty bound to undertake an appropriate assessment to consider the risk. This assessment draws on findings from a mitigation strategy, which itself accepts that there's no specific work on the pebble beds to consider the impacts of tourism. This document specifies the risks of very close proximity to include cat predation, increased fire incidents, and increased recreational pressure. Cat predation would be a non-issue, as guests would not be permitted to bring cats, and um, which the council could control by condition. To mitigate fire risk and other recreational impact, guests would be provided with a visitor guide for the pebble beds, meaning that guests would be better educated for sens sensible use than its usual visitors. This is notwithstanding that the mitigation strategy specifies that the pedal beds are significantly more likely to be frequented by residents than ex of Exmouth than by tourists, as Ollie's mentioned. Suggestions by officers that the site has easy access to the pebble beds is also disputed. Uh, it's evident that the site and the pebble beds are separated by a very busy high-speed road with no pedestrian footpaths. Devon County Council have confirmed via email that they do not consider this a safe pedestrian route. Mr. Rose has made reference to an appeal decision, which was dismissed for the conversion of a barn for use as a holiday let nearby, citing this decision as a basis for refusal at Pine Hollow. However, this is an extremely selective choice as there have been other appeal decisions allowed within the reference 400 meter zone. In allowing an appeal in Ben Ottery, the inspector noted that strategy 47 is aimed specifically at addressing the impact of domestic cats with any impacts unlikely due to guests not bringing this type of pet on holiday. This decision also highlighted that other recreational impacts are likely low due to no nearby pedestrian access and concluded that proposed holiday accommodation would pose less of a threat to the integrity of a habitat than say, a new dwelling. This appeal holds a number of similarities to the current proposal, with this, which this committee are asked to afford substantial weight. Mr. Rose has also made reference to Natural England's objection as to why the, object, uh, why the application cannot be supported. Please note they did not originally object to, to the proposal until they were reconsulted by officers, asking them to review their position. Standardised response was then uploaded, which seems to make no consideration to the fact the site visit had been conducted by officers who acknowledged at the time that the site had no direct access to the pebble beds. Whilst it's claimed that the impacts cannot be mitigated within this 400 metre zone, the council have accepted a habitat's mitigation payment for the application. There's been significant public interest in the proposal, um, and it also has support from Exmouth Town Council, whose neighbourhood plan encourages small scale tourist accommodation. It's clear to me that a common sense approach should be applied to this application, whereby any effects to the nearby habitats are unlikely to be significant and would be far outweighed by the positives of this modest but important contribution to Exmouth's tourism economy. We therefore request this committee vote in favour of approving the application. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Faraday. Right now, call the ward members, Councillor Ingham and Councillor Young. Councillor Ingham, please. Thank you, Chair. I'd like to begin by describing uh, the site of this application. One word, delightful. What do I feel about uh, this application for uh, uh, these huts? I believe they're appropriate. And the reason is, yes, I'm very concerned about the pebble bed heaths, as I was when our, our officers recommended that engineering companies could continue their activities up on Woodbury Common and expand them over a period of time. I was very concerned. I'm very concerned about the use of car parks up on Woodbury Common and the encouragement of people to, well, for their well-being, of course, to enjoy the pebble bed heaths. But I'm not concerned about the effect of this planning application would have on the pebble bed heaths. And that's because um, I did go and have a look at the site. Uh, and I went onto the site with permission 
without the uh, owners being present so that I could unintimidated, get a feel for, for uh, what's there. And you will have seen in the photographs, and you can see the one you're looking at, the amount of space involved in this. Uh, and so I think just these two hats are wholly appropriate. Now, if you didn't want anything to uh, uh, ha happen uh, at the back of this property like this, then we shouldn't have allowed, you know, um, the change uh, of, of stables and extension to that and the use in, uh, uh, in, in the uh, area you can look at uh, in that photograph to the right of what you're looking at. We shouldn't have allowed that, but we allowed that because we want to make um, these sort of dwellings sustainable. One property next door to this was empty for a number of years, in fact, for decades, because there wasn't enough to make it sustainable, certainly not as a, a, a cafe, which it had been up until I think the mid 1960s. So if you want to make uh, a business successful in this location, you can do so. And I think this is wholly appropriate. I don't see it as a, a damage or a threat to the Pebble Bed Heaths. I think it fits in superbly. And you will have seen the amount of parking that is available. I'd be quite happy if there was a condition put on there to restrict um, the, the, the usage of this and not holding events there at all, so there's no misunderstanding. But these two huts, they look so good, they fit in, and the care that has been taken in, in their location uh, is very apparent as soon as you walk there you can see how delightful they look from that photograph. I have no misgivings if you were to approve this um, application. I'm not the applicant chair, but if I was and you turned this down, I wouldn't be very happy. So we have to make sure that we only refuse plenty of applications that stand up um, on their own merit and that the inspector would support us on. I believe if you were to refuse this, you may come unstuck. Um, so I would recommend, Chair, that your uh, committee approve this application. Um, if you have any misgivings, I would say, please, please go and inspect the site because I know if you did so, you would pass it. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Ingham. Councillor Young, you have five uh, minutes. Thank you. Um, good morning, uh, members, and uh, thank you, Chair, for allowing me to speak on this application. I'm wearing several hats on this application, so I would declare the lot now. Uh, I'm ward member. I'm cabinet member with responsibility for coast, countryside and environment. I'm a member of the joint committee of the habitat mitigation for the ex estuary and the pebble bed heaths. Plus, I'm a board member for the pebble bed heaths uh, national nature to reserve. Finally, although not relevant to this application, I'm a member of the CPRE. I totally get that uh, uh, seeing there is a dwelling at this location already, why not allow this single dwelling, which previously had stables uh, with its curtilage, to utilise the land for another purpose? Elsewhere in East Devon and even in the ANOB, this would be acceptable. But we are talking uh, within an even more protected area. Uh, because of this very, very special location, basically one down from the World Heritage status. Mm -hmm. We need to follow the recommendation from Natural England and refuse this application. Uh, this is due to the risk of increased recreational pressure that would be caused by uh, residential and tourist accommodation because it's within 400 metres of the East Devon Pebble Bed Heaths. East Devon Heaths uh, SBA and the East Devon Pebble Bed Heath site of special scientific interest. The proposals are likely to cause a direct impact that would 
uh, that we could not mitigate through the Southeast Devon uh, European site mitigation strategy. Uh, the planning officer concludes that the proposal would be likely to have a significant uh, event uh, effect uh, to this important habitat. And although I have sympathy with the applicant, I cannot um, argue against National England or our officers on this planning application. Remember, we are following government guidance on this, and we uh, may experience serious implications if we ignore the recommendation by Natural England, which is a government body. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Young. Um, now, the, the main issue here seems to be the harm it might cause to the pebble bed heats. Now, um, Councillor Young, um, I know research is his, his subject, he does all his homework, so he's well versed in it. Um, and with the planning inspector at a previous appeal, uh, having decided that the pedal bed heat can be harmed, and with the strong resistance from Natural England, and we know what Natural England have brought forward for the Coley Valley and the Axe area, um, so um, a very strong, powerful body they are. Um, right, then um, I've got two speakers now. Um, Councillor Skinner, please. Thank you. And this is, uh, I, I wouldn't expect anything else from Councillor Young to say what he had to say, especially with all the hats that he's got to wear. And he spoke very eloquently and he, he said, all the right things, uh, in my opinion, in regarding his role and, and his representations of that as the ward member. But also there was another ward member, Councillor Ingham, who also spoke, I thought, very well. And I think what this is this is application is all about is that there is a level of balance here. Now, it's very difficult to sort of um, go forward on the basis of uh, thinking about having an approval on this application because of what would appear to be the weight and the level of weight of, of, of our policies that fight against this. But I, 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 I take a little bit more of a pragmatic view than that. I, <laughs> this, this is obviously a retrospective application because the, the, the glamping pods were there. We're looking at them up the screen. I wonder if Mr. Rose, if you could uh, spin it across to the other, uh, the, 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 was it the shower block or, or, or where the house, yeah, front, sorry, back, yeah, that one. Sorry, on, on again, next one. Um, seeing the house, the implication where the house is already there, we understand all of that, then the shower block and how that all works. And, and the wooded area which it sits, and, and uh, it's absolutely closed in. And if we might just go back to the glamping pods, uh, Mr. Rose, if it's possible, that, that's fine, that, that's quite fine. Um, and looking at these here, I mean, if we want to talk about effect into the countryside, the effect on the pebble bread heath uh, and the architecture that's been taking place here, um, you're actually... I think we're, we're, we're in a place whereby I think it's absolutely wonderfully done. So there's this balance between when we talk about um, improving the, um, the offer for, for people to come on holiday, there's the 70% uh, of AONB land that is for um, protection of, of um, our countryside. There's the Pebble Bed Heath, there's the SSSIs, and I think we all understand what they are, and Natural England with their policies about where they are. But I tend to think that this is probably leveled a little bit more at more about um, bigger types of developments, caravan parks and all these types of things that would could grow in scale and perhaps would have a detrimental effect to this. And that this is very small scale, family owned, um, quite uh, 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 at a level that, that for me uh, is, is, is actually complementary to the fact of retaining the countryside of which we're all supposed to enjoy. And if we don't offer up our countryside for people to enjoy, whom is it for? So I'm, I'm a little bit torn here because we do actually have the support of the town council, Exmouth Town Council. We do have the support of, of one ward member. The other ward member is relatively conflicted because of the many hats that he wears. And I understand that and there's nothing wrong and that's absolutely fine. And he's said his piece very well, got no criticisms in that. And he's, and he's also allowed his own view and he's entitled to that. And, he, and he's well versed as you've said, Chair. 
But there's 26 members of the public as well that actually think this is all really good. And even the next door neighbor, when we know with most applications, next door neighbors are usually the first ones to create and, and, and have an objection. And yet somebody sees it here as actually working and being complimentary to his own family and use, and people may be able to use it for, for, for that use and that as well. So, and, it's, and it is all part of the cycle of using. So I'm really torn on this one because I don't see that, that, that what is being put here is particularly detrimental to the pebble bed heats, is my view. I do take on the board the view that does this open a can of worms? And that was suggested by, by uh, uh, Councillor Young. And I will always revert back to um, that, all applications are predicated on their own merits. And when people talk about opening the door because you've done it down here and you didn't do it down there, well, absolutely not. But the only thing I know what's going to happen next is Mr. Rose is going to say that if I move a recommendation for approval, Mr. Rose is going to say to me, could you please give me some um, Re recommendations, reasons why I'm going to be overruling all of the policies that that are in that are in place. So I think I might I might hold myself in a little bit of reserve just to see where this where where this goes. But I can tell you now I am looking to move a recommendation of approval for this application. And if I didn't get that, I wonder whether or not we might actually have a recommendation of deferral to go and have a site meeting, as we seem to be becoming more and more popular having site meetings. And it was suggested by one of the ward members, that if we went and had a site meeting, we may have a different view. There may be something to be learnt from that. So I may very well go for, after I've heard what others have had to say, I may very well go for a site meeting. I think it could be beneficial for us all. And I'll leave it to that for the moment. Madam Chair, thank you very much. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. Councillor Davy, and I'm going to you because you can put a balance to this, I'm sure. Thank you, Chair. Um, yeah, it's very, very difficult. This, I mean, I've got to say, it looks lovely. I wouldn't mind staying there myself, but sadly, it's against two major policies, and those policies are there for a reason. We cannot guarantee that any visitors who stay there wouldn't drive to the pebble bed heaths, and that's the only way they're going to access them. Um, yeah, yeah, I mean, you might walk across the road. I, I think it can be done. Um, I, I've certainly crossed it on a bike, so it's got to be uh, doable. Um, but I, they'd be far more likely to drive out up onto the heaths, um, which are extremely adjacent. Why wouldn't you do that? Why would you be staying there if the heaths are not the attraction? Um, and, you know, it's been mentioned that Exmouth has many other attractions, the beach and so on, fine. So they're going to hop in their car and drive down to the beach um, or to access the town. I've got to say, Hullam Road is not a road uh, for walking or cycling down, although very occasionally you will see people doing that. Um, but it is, is a highly dangerous road, I think, for, for those activities. Um, they've got a 40 mile an hour speed limit down there. Um, and, uh, and people definitely hit that. So although it's very small scale, it's all significant, isn't it? And sadly, it's, it's against two major policies. So at the moment, although I, I feel this is very delicately balanced and, and sometimes we do overrule our own policies, um, but I think given the objection from Natural England, and given our own policies, unfortunately, I just can't support this at the moment. Now, I take it that's not a recommendation, Councillor Davy, or is it? Um, I'd like to hear what others have to say first, Chair, and um, uh, and but I, I may uh, be happy to uh, move a recommendation to to support the officers uh, on this. Right. Councillor Key, please. Yes, thank you, Chair. Can I just ask the actual supporter, did he not say that the actual pebble bed heaths are ridden over by um, uh, bicycles and such like? Is that correct? Yes, that is correct, yeah. Right. Which is more detrimental? Is it people riding over the pebble bed heaths 
Catch the bicycle. key. Catch the key. You. It's not in order for you to question public speakers. Um, so really, I am not sort of, questioning public speakers. I am now him. questioning myself. I asked. Uh, Mr. Rose could have answered that question. I well, didn't you, ask you, anybody you, in. I I'm did not ask the question. anybody sorry, sorry, in catch particular. The key, catch the key. You started off asking a question um, from the supporter and then you carried on with your question. So the assumption was that you were questioning him. Now, can we come back to the application itself, please? Right. So you don't as assume anything because I just asked a question. Anybody could have answered that. I didn't realise that the supporter was still online. Yeah. Now, okay. Can we go to is the more, Mr. Which is Rose. more important? Is it more important with what we've heard before of somebody riding over the pebble bed heats than two pods that are put here in actual fact in an absolute fantastic setting that are not harming anybody? Okay. Yes, we've got natural England. I know where natural England in actual fact have come a cropper in more than one situation in the past. I cannot see why this is not uh, acceptable here. It's too, I mean, the actual conversion of the building there as toilets surely is far um, more unattractive than what these two pods are. And I can't see any problem at all why these two pods could not be granted. I know we're, we're uh, less than um, the 400 metres from the pebble bed heats, but in this situation, um, I cannot see a problem. If the pebble bed heats are ridden over and that surely that is far more detrimental than what this is here. Thank you. Could, could I ask Mr. Rose, do you have any comment? And then I'll go to Cam young as a portfolio holder. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so the, I, I understand what Councillor Key is saying, but the whole point of the strategy and the policy approach and the mitigation strategy for the pebble bed heath is to not increase the use of what's going on there at the moment. So there may be bike fit, cycling going on. There are lots of people that go there to walk, but it's those uses that are the potential to damage the heath. And therefore, the policy approach is to divert further people away from using it to, to yeah. avert any further damage and that policy approach is nothing within 400 meters um, so I don't think it, it, it's not a, the logical approach in this instance to say just because something's happening there at the moment we should allow something else to happen because that's increasing uh, the harm and, and I don't know what more you need on that other than to have Natural England's advice and, and an appeal decision uh, that covers it um, and just why I'm, I'm I've got the mic is to say the uh, the agent mentioned the other appeal. Um, I, I, I suppose there's three things I'd say about the other appeal. It was 2016, so it predates the appeal quoted in the report. And the inspector in that case gave weight to the fact that it was uh, related to an equestrian use. So felt that would divert people away from the pebble beds. And it was over 400 metres by foot from the pebble beds, which this site, uh, which this site isn't. Um, I, I'd also say that um, I, I, I noted that the neighbour said that he uses the pebble bed heat a lot. And, and I think that is exactly why the policy is there about, about reducing, uh, reducing that impact. Councillor Skinner mentioned that uh, it, it, the policy was really aimed at larger scale schemes. Uh, it's, it's not. It's related at single dwellings, which is why we uh, collect contributions from single dwellings and, and, and why we had that previous appeal decision. Um, and then finally, sorry to sorry to go on a bit, but yes, just just picking up on uh, what Councillor Skinner was saying is that if he does move um, uh, for approval, then yes, I, I I will need the reasons why we are departing from policy and Natural England's recommendation and that appeal decision. What is it about this site that would set it apart from anybody else close or within 400 metres of the pebble beds bringing forward a similar development? Thank you. Thank you. And, and I think that's the fear of others as well, including myself, that you could open the floodgates. So what on earth is the point of having these policies in the first place? Um, Councillor Young, as portfolio holder, not as ward member, 
Do you have any comments to make about activities on the pebble he bed heaths, please? Yes. Um, thank you for allowing me to come back. Um, we are uh, well aware that um, there are other issues on, on the commons, such as um, uh, cyclists, dog walkers, um, uh, the usual poo effect, um, uh, horse riders. Um, uh, Lord Clinton gave the access to the um, pebble bed heaths um, and at that time in the 1930s um, it was for uh, walking and for um, uh, horse riding and walk walking dogs. Um, cycling wasn't thought to be a, a, a severe uh, problem. It has become uh, quite a severe problem on the pebble beds and we're looking at measures to uh, counteract uh, the damage that um, um, that is causing on the pebble beds. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Young. Right, I see no other hands up. Now, is there a proposal? Yes, Chair, I will propose uh, refusal and uh, supporting officers on this. Thank you. Is there a seconder? Yes, Chair, I'll second that. Councillor Chamberlain? Yeah. Right. Um, thank you. Uh, right, we have a proposer and a seconder. Um, over to you, Mrs Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Um, Councillor Davy and Councillor Chamberlain, there were two limbs to the recommendation of officers. Yes. One was to adopt the appropriate assessment and the other was the refusal for the reasons as listed. Um, are your recommendations for both of those? Yes, that's okay. okay. Yeah. Councillor Chamberlain? Yeah, that's fine. Thank you very much. Therefore, members, as you've just heard, the uh, it's a motion to recommend adoption of the appropriate assessment as appended to your report and refusal for the reasons as listed in the report. When your name is called, please would you indicate whether you're in support of the recommendation of refusal and adoption, whether you're against the motion to recommend refusal and adoption and or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Thank you. Councillor Brown. Uh, Ria, Ria, definitely support your proposal. Councillor Chamberlain. Uh, support the recommendation for refusal. Councillor Davy. Support refusal. Councillor De Serum. Reluctantly support refusal. Councillor Key. Abstain. Councillor Lawrence. Abstain. Councillor Pratt. Support refusal. Councillor Skinner. Um, uh, against refusal, I think. Yeah. Thank you. Councillor Rag. Support refusal. Thank you. So we've got one, two, three, four, five, six um, in support of refusal, one against, and two abstentions. That's recommended for refusal. Thank you, uh, Wendy. And I'd like to thank the speakers for their contributions. Thank Chair, you. could I just add something, please, with your acceptance? Yeah. Uh, and it's only, ju it's only just to say that um, I would have actually moved for recommendation to go and have a look as a site inspection. Well, the vote's been but, taken uh, now, Councillor Skinner, so I, we I, move I, on. Thank you. Oh, um, don't let me finish. Item 11, application 21-1546, full application, um, British Red Cross Society, South Street, Exmouth, and that's on page 94. I'd like to welcome uh, Mike Leveridge, the applicant, and Ward Member Nick Cookway. Thank you. Over to you, Chris, to re present your report, please. Thank you, Chair. Uh, yeah, so the British Red Cross Society, South Street in Exmouth, and you can see the location on the screen there. So it's an application for construction of a three-storey building 
to provide four flats and an office. And it's a demo, so demolition of the existing uh, hall on the site. And it's before you because it has uh, ward member support. The site's in the built up area boundary close to the town centre and the conservation area is uh, on the boundaries on the opposite side of the road here. So the site's outside of the conservation area, albeit uh, fairly close uh, to it. Uh, and these are the elevations of the hall at the moment, uh, which has been in office use and you'll see the photos in a minute. And this is the scheme as proposed. So we've got existing buildings, uh, uh, flats on the site that you'll see at the moment. And then it's this block here that is proposed so we've got the existing footprint and then we've got the block, the new block of flats and office as proposed there. So you can see uh, ground floor here, we've got uh, office uses and then we've got uh, flats uh, above. Uh, and you can see the side elevation. So this is uh, the side of the existing uh, buildings in the, the street, as you can see there, and the building in, the relation, in relation to it. And you can see that we've got uh, two floors with the upper floor in the roof. And then this, so this is the aerial, aerial. So you can see the hall here at the moment, and you can see the, the properties on the road to the rear. You can see the properties I was showing you that are adjoining that, that follow the corner. And then there's a bungalow to the site here. And this is the boundary of the conservation area taken in this building opposite. So from the street, we've got the building here in the conservation area. And we've got these uh, buildings opposite, opposite, which I showed you in the, uh, the elevation, and then the, the hall building. Uh, and then a spin round. Here's the hall to be demolished uh, with the flats. And then you can see the relationship to the, the properties to the rear that are, that are raised up on higher land. Uh, as such, this is a view from the back of the site, looking back towards those properties at the rear. And then this is the adjoining property. So uh, that is this, the rear of this property here. So you can see it's got a, you might just be able to make out as a staircase up here to a rear door. And this is the site here on the right of the, of the hall. And then the view uh, from the front of the street. Uh, and then a view of the back of the hall and the relationship with the, the flats to the rear and the view out of uh, their rear windows, looking back towards the hall and then that, that adjoining property. And then the view of the street. So you can see down the street, got bungalows uh, on the right there and more traditional properties on that side. Um, so if I just go back. So um, we're in, in terms of the principal development, it's in the built up area boundary. They're going to put replacement offices in for those that are lost that will be of a better quality. So in terms of the demolition of the existing building and replacement with residential, the principal is accepted uh, and, and supported. Um, but in terms of the design and character of the area, you'll see in the report that there's concerns raised by the fact that the building is proposed to be set back um, to forget the elevation. So we've got the building line that comes across here and then we've got the building at a slightly different angle to that built into the corner of the building. And therefore, in the elevation straight on, it's set back at a different angle to the building on the street and slightly taller and of a, 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 a more bulky design. So it adjoins this property at, a, at, a, at an awkward angle and it's set back to provide parking to the front, but those parking spaces are short. They're only four meters deep. So any cars there will, will overhang uh, the pavement. And equally, as you can see from the footprint of the existing building here, it's considerably deeper uh, than the adjoining uh, properties. So the view of offices is this is going to result in a, an awkward relationship uh, in the street. So we've got a bulkier building here set back from this block at an angle uh, and at a greater height. And we feel that that will be uh, harmful to the, the, the character and the appearance of the area. Um, but also of concern is the impact on the amenity of these properties to the rear and this property off to the right here. So we've got a much larger and taller building than this. It's just fractionally taller than the, the buildings to the, the side here, but set back so that its ridge is set back into the site. It has been reduced by about 0.3 meters during the course of the application, um, but it's still higher than the, the ridge of this property and you can see set back into the site. Um, and our concern uh, twofold, one, it relates to the fact that there'll be 11 metres only from the rear of these windows to the rear of this block. Uh, so the new block will create a dominant uh, impact on these residents. Uh, 
So if you imagine that it's set back in further here, but a much taller building at only 11 metres. So we're concerned about the bulk of this building and impact on those residents and uh, a loss and overlooking and loss of privacy from having windows down at this level on the rear block, looking back at only 11 metres distance. And then the other concern relates to the impact on this property. So on this boundary here, the proposal has uh, windows in the side that will overlook these garden areas. And it's also got a window that's right at the top of these steps that this access into this top floor here. So we're concerned about the impact on the amenity of the adjoining residents from having those windows right on the boundary overlooking those uh, rear gardens. So from that point of view, uh, we feel that the scheme uh, represents a, a poor standard of amenity to, to neighbours and to the occupiers of the flats. So uh, in conclusion, whilst the principle is acceptable, accepted and we feel that there is a scheme to be had here, we're concerned about the, the details of this scheme twofold, the, the bulk and mass and height of the building proposed and its, its awkward relationship on the street scene. And then secondly, the impact that it will have on the amenity of the residents to the rear and to the residents to this side of the, scene, of, of the site. So for those two reasons, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. You're on mute, Councillor Rag. Somebody was delivering logs, so I thought I'd better mute. Um, we have a statement to be read out by Wendy on behalf of the objector, Geoffrey Wilcox. Is that right, Wendy? Yes, that's correct. Yes. Thank you. OK. So Mr Wilcox's statement reads as follows. I've had my property opposite the proposed development for over 25 years. I consider the proposed building is over density. Parking is extremely difficult in the area and visitors to the proposed flats and offices would not be able to park and could lead to illegal parking. This may prevent access to my garage. Four small parking spaces are not sufficient for four flats and two offices. I am almost housebound and the proposed building with dormers to the second floor would look directly into my only lounge and bedroom windows cutting out light, which would affect my mental health and in turn could lead to more cost to social services. There is a narrow surface road opposite the proposed building, which has become very busy as the homeowners are now using, <clears throat> excuse me, is now using their back gardens for garages and parking, and there is an increased use for deli from delivery vehicles. The street light is needed for the corner of this service road. While houses may be better than the old Red Cross Hall, offices in a residential area are not, and leads to overcrowding. End of statement. Thank you, Wendy. Wendy, um, can I ask, um, does Mr Wilcox live in one of the flats? Because that's the only um, dwelling, they're the only residential dwellings that I can recall as being opposite. Otherwise, it faces onto the rear of the Blackmore Theatre. From what, from what I've read, um, he, when I spoke, um, spoke to Mrs Wilcox, um, she didn't. She didn't sort of say where she lived. But from from reading it, it's my property opposite the proposed development. Ah, uh, if I yeah. can confirm, Councillor Rag, I, I believe he lives in uh, 17A South Street, which is this oh, property okay. here. So, yeah. op, op, sort of just offset from the front of the yes. site. Yes, understood. Thank you for that clarification. Um, now we go to the applicant, Mike Loveridge. Welcome to meet him, Miss Loveridge. You have three minutes. Thank you. Um, thanks for the opportunity. I represent our local family business that employs seven time full time staff. I have lived and worked in Exmouth all my life and been self employed since 88. I am supported by my two sons, a plaster, a ceramic tiler, and a cabinet maker, and my wife in the office. Due to recent expansion, I am very proud to announce that we are the only construction company in Exmouth that has a fully functioning workshop in Leslie Road. Some recently gained contracts include 10 teak beds for the Berkeley Hotel in London. The, for the foregoing explains a little. We live in the town and we're here for the long term. Moving on to my application, we've made extensive revisions to the scheme under guidance. 
the request for an unnecessary conservation report has contributed to delay. I'm mindful of the adjacent area and when finalising design, we have tried to mimic our previous adjacent project of five units in 98. This site has provided an opportunity to create another small scale housing scheme on a brownfield site in a, sustain, substan, a sustainable location. Pre-app advice has, provide, has provided an office suite. I have already secured a tenant. The principle of a mixed use scheme is an acceptable development of five units and would add to the council's housing figures. EDDC advertised in a journal last March 29th for persons who own land with potential for five to 20 units, hours would help secure the five land, the five year land supply. Supported by two local councils and uh, councillors and the town council, it also meets the expectations of the neighbourhood plan. It is totally compliant with the MPPC policy and makes full effective use of available land. The, the development is in a Bixon Street style and scene. The design is a subjective matter upon which people have different opinions. I have only ever had positive feedback from our previous development. There are some that would maybe like to have a smaller building. We are proposing the three-story project in keeping with the existing properties. Please see my plan of the immediate area, which I um, distributed last uh, earlier this week. The council has been a little biased with regards to our letters of support, which must be searched for within cor the correspondence section. But the recent letters but more recent letters, which are more visible, are in the numbered comments titled section. This is due to the timing of validation, which is not a seamless exercise when dealing with a third party working for EDDC. May I also draw your attention to the letters of support from Mr. Day, Pomeroy and Wood and Miss Bradford. Two of these gentlemen live in the Roll Flats, which, about which planners have based their main concerns. With regards to specific design, the closest roll windows are kitchen windows, Therefore, residents would be stood behind a worktop. We have redesigned, put road lights in, second floor, outlooking onto, um, so overlooking would be impossible. Windows to the north and east are small kitchen windows. Second floor gable windows could be obscured if required. At two, two COVID friendly meetings with the immediate neighbors, I showed them the current drawings. The council has no distance standards against which to judge the relationship between the proposed and existing. The land lies in extremely high in a relatively high density area and the existing builder covers the whole site. A net 28 meter square loss of proposed, foot, of proposed footprint, similar back, to, uh, similar back to back relationships also exist within the area. We state that our closest point of contact is 11 meters between the properties. In Bicton Street, houses are an average of nine meters apart, face to face front rooms. This development also provides the provision of parking albeit small, and will create a new safe footpath creating access to the residents uh, existing in Roll Street Flats. That's I truly amazing. believe that this is this propose, I'm, propo I'm proposing and is a good continuation of our previous development. Thank you again, ladies and gentlemen, and if you have any questions, I'd be glad to answer them. You're on Thanks. mute again, Councillor Rag. Councillor Hookway, you have five minutes. Thank you, Chair. Uh, my comments are uh, neutral for this application. I absolutely support the uh, need to redevelop the site. The hall has had its day and clearly uh, uh, is in a poor state of repair. I, I also support this application uh, in the sense that it is providing for two bedroom flats. These are very desperately needed in um, well, Litton Ward as well as the town of Exmouth. And, and uh, I think that's, that's a very positive move. Uh, but I also think officers have got it right. I think it, it, the development is too large. Uh, I understand what the applicant has just said. He's clearly trying to develop his business, um, but I think um, there's just a little bit too much. We have to be very aware of when we are um, developing property and we overlook others. I think that's an issue. Uh, I sincerely hope that uh, uh, whatever the decision today, that our officers will be able to work with the applicant so that a satisfactory solution uh, 
to this important development and much needed development can go ahead. Uh, but at the moment, it does seem to be a little bit too much. So hopefully something can be worked out, but I think it is an important uh, development to take place. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Hookway. Um, well, yes, I know this site. I was lobbied on it some time ago. Um, I think it's worth pointing out that, as Mr Rose has done, there is concern about the distance between the flats, just 11 metres, and the proposed um, development. So, does anyone have any questions for Mr Loveridge, please? Can you put your hand up if you have? Take your hand down if you, if you haven't. Um, but can you put your hands up if there are any questions for Mr Loveridge? Just to be totally fair to him. Um, I see no hands have gone up, so we'll move into the debate then. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Skinner. Uh, oh, can I go, Chair Chairman, as the, as the ward member? Oh, sorry. Yes, yes. Great, you great, came great, in great. Like Go on. Yes. I, I, I didn't want to leap in, Chair. I, I, I felt as a ward member. Um, yes, most of, of you will have had the opportunity to read the comments that I made, which, yes. as you can see, are broadly supportive. Um, and I was very pleased to see that uh, Councillor Hookway, my fellow ward member, was neutral in his comments. Um, but I, um, he did say that there is a need to redevelop the site, which is in a poor state of repair. He also mentioned that the four two-bedroom flats will be much needed. And Mr. Rose has already touched on this morning that we're in the built-up area boundary, we're close to the town centre, we're outside the conservation area, and we are replacing what is there with better quality offices. So the principle has been accepted. Uh, Mr. Loveridge has touched on the fact that he's taking over a brownfield site, which I believe, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but I think that's part of government policy to encourage the use of brownfield sites. Um, so it also meets the neighbourhood plan. So all in all, yes, there are concerns about uh, height, but what Mr. Rose also said that the new building is going to be fractionally taller. The, it has been reduced by 0.3 metres. So there's been a lot of positive things to overcome the, the issues of overlooking, um, which I think Mr. Loveridge also said in his statement was uh, virtually impossible. So uh, for all those reasons, for the benefits that this scheme will bring, particularly the employment and the four two bedroom flats, I would like to go against the proposed recommendation and recommend approval, um, obviously, if I am to find a suitable seconder. So that's what I'm putting forward today, Chair. I'm putting forward approval uh, based on what I've just touched on, subject to finding a suitable seconder. Thank you, Chair. Thank you. Is there a seconder, please? Yeah, I'll, I'll second that. Like to speak on it, Councillor Skinner? Yeah, thank you. And I and I think I think the trouble is this one here, I absolutely get where the difficulty that the officers have. There's no doubt that when you look at this, you look at this building, and you said it yourself, Chair. You, you we I think everybody sits here is understands that we need the redevelopment of this site and it's in it's in the middle of the town and and, and everything's acceptable. The only caveat I have with that is that it is when when uh, sorry, Councillor Rose, I was gonna call you. Sorry, Chris, doing it again to you. You don't want that 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 role. Um it was the, the car parking only having four metres and overhanging out over into the pavements. That was a little bit of an issue. There was also a bit of an issue with the gentleman and being seen. I, 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 I can sort of get that. There's, there are, I'm not over the moon, if you mind to have it. There are things about this site that don't really quite work. The problem you get into is if we refuse this application and come back, um, it means that they're, they're obviously not about whether the, the expense to the to the applicant, although there would be a huge expense to the applicant, or whether or not there would be a need that something could be done which may be better. But I'm struggling in some respects, and Councillor Desarum actually pointed out a very good point. Of course, it is a brownfield site to a degree, and the gentleman spoke very well and wanted to retain part of his business, and he's a local businessman as well. There's lots of things here that tick the box. Um, to go forward and I think it's a very balanced 
there's a very balanced view. You can shape this one um, one way or the other, and that's the that's the thing with issue with with, with planning. I think coming out on what um, particularly on what Councillor Desarm has said, and he spoke very well, and so did uh, Councillor Hookway, by the way, who relatively neutral, but he pointed out lots of these things as well. I think I am mindful. I was actually starting this application. I was going to be mindful to go for a refusal, but listening to it and listening to other people and seeing actually lots of benefits that could come from this site is in some respects, in some respects, I wish we could go for a deferment to jiggle about one or two things we have issues over, but I don't really think that that would probably land with people. So we're in a sort of a do we or don't we? And if it's on, if it's going to land in that place, I think I'm going to very much be supporting Councillor Desarm and I'm going to move and help to uh, second the recommendation of approval for this site for the many reasons that we can. Thank, Thank you. you, Councillor Skinner. Councillor Davy. Thank you, Chair. I, I think I erroneously said I was the ward member for this one earlier. So, uh, Wendy, if you could uh, delete that one. Um, it's, uh, it's just outside my ward, actually. I hadn't uh, quite realised that. I, I think I've been in this building, actually, uh, some time ago. We all understand the principle of development here is absolutely fine. Um, uh, it's much needed housing. Uh, the fact it could be a live workspace uh, or the offices uh, can be used and there's a shortage of office space in Exmouth, that's all great. But I think there are issues to do with the parking. Highways have pointed out that really um, <clears throat> four metres is not enough um, to, to park a vehicle um, and they're going to overhang the pavement. Uh, there are issues with overlooking um, and uh, loss of light and privacy for other residents, and we do have to be mindful of that, and and the overall size of the building. That last one I don't have such a problem with. There are some quite bulky buildings around there, including the Blackmore Theatre, um, but I, I am concerned um, on behalf of the other residents um, about overlooking and uh, loss of privacy and light. And I, I would have thought those could have been overcome um, by designing the building in such a way um, that those could be mitigated. Um, and I know how hard our officers do work with uh, applicants uh, to try and find an acceptable compromise. And they obviously don't feel that the compromise that's been reached here is acceptable and therefore they're recommending refusal and I'm going to go along with that. Thank you, but we've already had a proposer and a seconder, so um, thank you for that, Councillor Davy, Councillor Key. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, I mean, one, one can see that this actually site needs developing. I'm not happy with the actual height of the buildings there because of the overlooking on the front. Going back to the parking, Mr. Rose said that the actual vehicles will overhang the pavement. Well, the new law is now that there's not to be any obstruction by vehicles on pavements. And so I don't know how they're going to overcome that problem because um, uh, that is that is the new policy and the new regulation that you're not allowed to block a pavement with a vehicle. Thank you. Thank you. Um, right there. Oh, Councillor Chamberlain, just put your hand up. I did. Thank you very much, Chair. Um, this application, I have several concerns with this application. Without a shadow of a doubt, it definitely needs redevelopment in that area. Not the principle of development there, I completely agree with. However, and listening to Councillor Skinner as well, I would like to propose, I know I can't propose at the moment, but I would very much like it to go to deferral to have further negotiations. This could be a really good site, but the concerns of it at the moment are that it is slightly out of size for that area. The impacts on the neighboring properties from overshadowing, overbearing and light to the properties in front, behind and to the side 
I could not support the current um, the current scheme there. However, I don't think we're a million miles off where it needs to be, but I would really like to work with, with the applicant to just make these changes so that it's right going forward. It's a great scheme. We've got the office use. We've got the flats in there. I am concerned about the parking and um, obviously um, the sizes and things like I've said. So very much, I would really like to go back to the applicant uh, and have a chat going forward and, and try and defer this going forward. Like Councillor Skinner said, I think he was thinking that was going to be a good idea as well going forward so we can get it in right first time. Thank you. Thank you. So we have a proposal to defer. Um, Councillor Desarum and Councillor Skinner, would that be acceptable to you to, to go back and try to negotiate? Because I gather that you weren't entirely no, happy no, with it. I, well, for me, I mean, Councillor, no, sorry, let Councillor Desarum speak first. I'm happy well, with it. But I think, well, if, if, if this will help with the planning process, then yes, a deferral will be useful because obviously uh, the, the refusal as it stands today is not going to be very helpful to the applicant. So I, I'm happy to do anything that will help the applicant. So if the committee feels a deferral will be the best course of action for the applicant, I'm happy to go with that. Thank you. So you're withdrawing your proposal? I withdraw on the basis that if you're suggesting yeah, well, will help uh, supporting Mr Rose, I'll, I'll be happy to go along with that. Thank you. Are you happy with that, Councillor Skinner? I, I am, Chair, but I, I, could I have a question to, count, to oh, I can't Councillor Rose again? Mr <laughs> Rose, please. And, and Chris, I think, I think it, it's a really difficult one, this, mm. because we can all see that something should happen. But we, I think we can all see there's also issues with it as well. But, but where does it go? And of course... The countenance is that if we went, if it, if it went with a refusal, they get a free go. The problem with the free go is it almost says to yourselves as officers that, well, the council didn't like that, so you need to come back. Well, actually, as councillors, I think we'd like the principles of what we do. And I think deferral doesn't quite give the open book for, for the officers to actually say, that's in the bin, you've got to come back with something different. What it says is there are particular issues. And I think we need to be, Chair, through you, and it's been mentioned with other members, we need to be quite specific about the things that we are struggling a bit with for a deferral motion. And the things are the overlooking. I'm not sure how, you, how Mr Rose may, may think how you're going to get over that because it is what it is, it, where, it's, where it is, and it's going to look at who it's going to look at. So there, there is that, but we could have the overlooking. The car park as well, Councillor Key spoke on that and I touched on it and he's quite right. And at the end of the day, we can't really have a car hanging out of a pavement. I'm sure you would agree, Chair, that somebody may be blind or somebody partially sighted or somebody with children and prams and all the rest of it. And we're bumping into a car. So this thing's not quite right. So I'm, I'm absolutely going to go. But from Mr. Rose's point of view, could I, could I just have a comment from Mr. Rose as to how he feels about that, but I am going to support, I'm going to support the deferral. Yes, I am. But I'd just like Mr. Rose to, to add something to it. I've got a feeling I might learn something. I, I'm sure we all will, Councillor Skinner. Over to you, Mr. Rose. Thank you. I can't promise you'll learn anything, but um, <laughs> uh, I, I think that your members are in, a, in, in, in the position I think officers were in, where you know, there's all these good things about the scheme that we want to do, but we didn't feel it was quite there for exactly the reasons you've stated, the sort of the bulk of the position on the site, the impact on the neighbours and the car parking. And I think there is a scheme that could be had there. It might be bringing the, full, the building forward more like we've got in the street here, uh, and therefore that would help prevent the overlooking at the rear. Uh, it might need no car parking, but I think that would be acceptable in planning terms in this location. So, I, I, I yeah, I, I think members are in exactly the position that officers were in, but we got to a point with the applicant where I think the applicant felt that, that they were going to, you know, wanted to, to see how committee felt about it. But I'd like to think that if, if committee feel that, that, that uh, we should have another go at negotiating, that the applicant would, would take that on board. Or obviously, if they don't want to take that on board, then we can bring it back. That sounds good to me, Madam Chair. That sounds bang on the money for me. I'm, I'm all for it. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. I, I think we've been very reasonable with this application. Um, Councillor Pratt, do you have anything to add, please? Well, all I just want to say, uh, uh, Chair, is that uh, I do support the uh, 
the developer here, and, and uh, it's just getting the 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 the, the, the development right. Yeah. And uh, if we can get back on a deferral and uh, sort it out with the officers, then uh, all well and good. Thank you, Councillor Pratt. Councillor Key, anything to add to that? No, Chair. No. Thank you very much. All. Thank you. So we've had a proposal. Um, as it's been seconded to defer. Uh, over to you, Mrs. Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Yes, my note of that the reasons for the deferral is it for negotiations between officers and the applicant in relation to the bulk position, impact on neighbours and parking. Thank Members, if, if you are in support of that recommendation to defer for those reasons, please indicate when your name is called. Apologies, I'm getting a bit confused. Would you indicate whether you support those motions for deferral, whether you're against the motion for deferral for those reasons, or indicate whether you're abstaining from the vote when your name is called? Thank you, Chair. Councillor Brown. Yeah, uh, support, thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Support motion to defer, please. Councillor Davy. Support deferral. Councillor De Serum. Support deferral. Councillor Key. Support deferral. Councillor Lawrence. Support deferral. Councillor Pratt. Support deferral. Councillor Skinner. Thanking Councillor Chamberlain for her help. Yes, supporting deferral. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, welcome to Councillor Woodward. Thank you, um, Wendy. Thank you. <laughs> and support deferral. Thank you. And do you have any declarations? No, no declarations on any of them. No. Apologies, Chair. Could I just ask Councillor Woodward whether he heard all the presentation and debate before he can vote in this matter? Yes, no, I did. Thank you. Thank Shirley, you very much. Yes. The whole. And finally, Councillor Rag. Support deferral. Thank you. So that is unanimous in supporting deferral. So that's recommended for deferral. Thank you, Wendy. Chair, would I be able just to say just two quick things, please? Well, I think we, we've taken the vote now. Um, it's been... Only for, only, for a matter of, only for a matter of clarification. Well, I think that would come with... Um, during the negotiation, Mr. Leverage, okay. so okay. Uh, you 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 can reason that out with officers. Then we we dealt with the application, and I think it's been very fairly debated. Thank okay. you. All right. Um, right. Uh, agenda item twelve, application twenty one, eighteen sixty full. That's Barrett Farm Road, Exeter Road, Ottery St Mary, page one hundred and six. And I'd like to welcome Martin Nanskeville and Ward Member Councillor Peter Faithful. Um, right, over to you, uh, Chris Rose, to present your report, please. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so this is an application at, at Barrack Farm, Exeter Road, uh, Ottery St Mary, and it's for construction of an agricultural workers' dwelling. And it's here as there's Ward Member support. Um, so you can see on the screen here the location for the agricultural workers dwelling. You can see the, the farm complex that's here at the moment that doesn't have a, a farmhouse associated with it, which I'll, I'll come on and mention in a minute. Uh, these are the floor plans that we've got for the, for the development that you will see. Uh, it does include a farm office, boot room, meeting room, again, which I'll, I'll mention. And these are the elevations for the, for the, the dwelling and the roof plan. And again, the aerial of it, so you can see uh, related to uh, the east of uh, Ottery St. Mary, the, the farm there and the location for the for the farmhouse, which is off, off the side of this picture here. So this is looking down the farm back towards Ottery. So the farmhouse is proposed over uh, over here. Uh, and again, this is from the, from the, um, the east, looking back towards the site. So the farmhouse would be up in this location. Again, this is one of the, the, the few views over the hedges that you will see the the site from so again roughly where my my cursor is 
Um, and again, uh, this is the, the site uh, stood where the, the building is, roughly where the building is proposed in relation to the, to the farmhouse. Um, so barrack farms run as part of a, a wider dairy uh, of, of some, I think it's insects of about 600 acres, which covers two farms. And the other farm is where there's a farmhouse uh, that partly relates to the management of this farm. Um, uh, and it's a brick and render, uh, brick and render property, uh, as you could see, uh, two stories. Um, so in terms of the principle of development, we've got policy uh, H4 of the local plan, which allows for um, agricultural workers dwelling subject to a number of criteria. Uh, one of those criteria is that there's a proven and essential need. Uh, in this case, we feel that that's been demonstrated by the applicant. There's a, there's a separate, so, so this is a group of farm buildings here that don't have a farm, uh, a farmhouse associated with it. Uh, there's a large number of livestock with the farm. We've had an independent consultant look at the applicant's case and has come back and said that, yes, for welfare reasons, for the separation, or given how far the other farmhouse is from this farm complex, sorry, in relation to the, the, the other of the two farms that join, um, that make this holding, uh, that for those reasons, that there is uh, an essential and proven need for a agricultural workers dwelling on this site. So we're satisfied that uh, the applicant has made that case. Um, the farm is viable. So yes, we've seen the account. So from that point of view, it complies with that part of the policy. Uh, it's not a temporary. Uh, the applicant's employed on the farm. Uh, we're satisfied that there's no other buildings nearby that could be used or on the farm. Uh, and the applicant would agree to an agricultural tie. So the issue, main issue outlined in the report is to do with the size of the dwelling proposed, because the mm -hmm. policy says that it should be commensurate, the size of the dwelling should be commensurate with the agricultural need. So in this case, there is a need for one person to live on the site to manage and look after the livestock. Now, obviously, that doesn't mean necessarily that we would only allow a one bed house because that person is likely to have a, a, a partner and maybe a family. So we, we allow larger dwellings uh, than that but unusually large dwellings aren't justified. And the reason for that is that the cost of uh, building an unusually large dwelling would put pressure on the farm and, and its future. And also because when we have agriculturally tied buildings, uh, the idea is when that farm no longer needs them, they go on the market and they become available for other people that in, in the farming industry. And obviously the, the larger the house, the more it costs to build, the more it is going to cost for those people to build it and it might price those people out of the market. In this instance, we've got a, a property that is proposed that covers some, uh, well, I think it's 360 square meters in total. Doesn't look that large on the plans, but it's 360 square meters down to about 330-ish if you take out the meeting room, which obviously they're entitled to have farm office and boot room to, to, to manage the, the farm. Um, so we're down at sort of the three, 20 uh, square meter mark and although not specifically stated in our policy uh, we usually use a, an upper guide of 200 square meters as being the maximum that we would allow for an agricultural workers dwelling and this is uh, this is you know, half as much again and a bit more and, and and even 200 meters is considered to be um, generous if you think that the average four bed house being built by one of the large house builders is probably 140 160 square meters then you get the idea that this is sort of twice as large as the sort of four bed house that might be built by uh, our, our friends in the development industry. And that's reflected in the fact that this building is, is uh, sort of is about 16 meters across and, and uh, getting on for 20 meters in the other direction. So it, it's, it's a large footprint. So in light of that, uh, despite everything else being okay with the application, officers are concerned that the, the size of the footprint here is well in excess and doesn't uh, well excess of the need of the farmhouse and might then uh, prove costly impact on the farm to build. And then the future selling price of that um, would be uh, would would price out uh, other people uh, in the agricultural industry should it become available. Now, I, uh, we, we did go back to the applicant and advise that, uh, that, that the footprint was too large and uh, he submitted some uh, indicative revised plans, which did take the floor space down. But I must admit, I measured it again yesterday. Um, 
It took the floor space of the dwelling down, but only by about 10 square meters and did add on a double garage. So um, we, on the basis that uh, the applicant wasn't uh, entertaining negotiation with us down to the sort of 200 maximum mark, we didn't entertain those um, amended plans because they weren't taking us uh, any further forward. Uh, in terms of other issues with the scheme, uh, there's no there's no concern you'll see in the report over the visual impact from the, the dwelling or um, because it's uh, there's hedge planting to the majority of the roads, although obviously if you've got a building that's, that's twice the footprint than it needs to be, it's going to have a visual impact. But that impact is mainly from the roads, from those photos I took looking back up towards the, the, farm, way, the farm there. So in terms of the wider visual impact, it's not considered there'd be any harm. In terms of archaeology, you'll see that there's a condition uh, that the ar county archaeologist is recommending to carry out um, some groundworks prior to, to, to works commencing. So in conclusion, the applicants demonstrated the need, the visual impact uh, of the scheme would be acceptable, but it's considered by officers that the, the size of the dwelling proposed is way in excess of that that's uh, required or justified. And for that reason, the application is recommended for refusal. Thank you. Thank you, Chris. Um, right, now we have the speakers. Um, Martin Nanskivill, the applicant, uh, welcome to the meeting. You have three minutes. Okay, thank you very much and good afternoon, everybody. Um, just a quick point, it's on the west of Ottery as opposed to the east of Ottery, but um, well, there. Um, as you said, heard, the need and the justification has been fully agreed, um, and we've got concerns of the size. Um, this is a reasonably large farm for East Devon and covers a significant area. Over the years, it has grown quite a bit, and as things go, we change. We've got mother and father. Um, who are gradually winding down. We're in their 70s and 80s. And um, they're winding down and me and my brother, you know, we are stepping up and taking over. I haven't got where I live. We need to build a house on the farm. You know, security, animals, it's just a step forward to take things forward and, um, and progress. Now, we've got um, to make it, understandable. I think we have to understand, they keep calling it agricultural workers dwelling. Now, uh, like I've said, I'm, I'm not an agricultural worker. I'm a, I don't know what we call ourselves, but a farmer, businessman, anyway, but it's wherever the buck stops. And there's a big difference between agricultural workers dwelling and a, a, a principal farmhouse. And I've, hopefully you've read the email I've sent, but there is multiple things which carry go on and go on inside the farmhouse and it's getting more uh, we're, with rules and regulations these days things are getting more and more with health and safety and training of staff and what have you um, care of the employee or duty of care they call it don't they um, anyway we got so if you've read that, you'll understand the multiple uses compared to an agricultural worker, which is just a contractual 50, 60 hours, whatever, and they turn up and go home again. Whereas the principal farmhouse, my house, will be everybody's involved, the wife, the children, and what have you. And so it does get quite busy. Um, concerns of a size... So that's the difference between the two. Um, I mean, what does in, money's a water a little bit is the PDQs, what people can build in the, in the countryside and convert farm buildings. I, I find that a bit misleading, where I could probably convert one of my buildings to a 465 square meter, and, and then I'd have to put another building up for the, um, for the animals, which doesn't make sense. Um, Mr. Councillor Pratt's ref comments about the ground being... Um, Three minutes. How many? Sorry. Time's up, Mr. Man Man oh, right. Manskerville. Okay. You can finish that sentence, Mr. Manskerville. 
it's just regarding the, 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 the positioning of the ground, it's a very complex situation. Um, but he's, he's suggested that it is in a allocated and a favorable position for development. Well, I can't understand whether he quite be for it or against it and wants the housing there. But in principle, we want to just carry on farming it for a bit longer, really. And, um, okay. I, okay, thank, I, thank you very much. Right. Thank you. Um, members have listened carefully, I know. And we do have farmers on the committee who understand the issues you've raised. Um, Councillor Faithful, ward member. Thank you, Chair. Um, could I first declare a personal interest before I start? i well known by the applicant and I've had quite considerable conversations with him about this application. Um, so, yeah. This application, uh, I'm listening to the previous planning application. I wonder if this might be possible to be deferred. It's, I don't know if the councillors have seen who, the alternative plan that uh, Martin has put forward. Um, he has reduced it, but so that the living space it is approximately 200 square metres, but it does include the agricultural parts of the house, meeting rooms and whatever. Um, basically, I support the agricultural dwelling on the site. This area is within the land set aside for a green wedge under the uh, neighbourhood plan NP4, uh, securing a green wedge in that area and have it keeping the farm going on there for as long as possible will secure that area. Um, I would support some tree planting to, to act as screening if that's required and I would very much support screening. And um, the applicant is suggesting to me that he wants to go offline uh, so to be fully green and I'm not sure if enough detail has been put in the second plan or even the first one to give enough detail as to for a full planning application um, but I would support going passive house sort of standard farmhouse um, as far as the land being put forward for uh, development it was put forward at the first call for sites but they didn't put it forward for the second call for sites and they've made considerable changes to their farming practice and they've they've got a whole system set up and this is a part of it although this piece of land is relatively small um, it's an important element to the farming practice um Uh, what am I saying? So I, I very much want to see the land secured uh, as farming land for as long as possible. Um, I kind of understand what Mr. Rose is saying about the uh, size of the farm and wonder if it might be possible to talk through exactly what, what needs to be farmhouse and whether the office part might be a separate building or you know, work out how they want to do this. It, we've identified that the need for a, a house there is what exactly it needs to be. We've had, I don't know if other councillors have seen the alternative plan or whether they just had the letter, um, but I don't know if there's been enough time to properly look through the alternative farmhouse or properly look through the whole thing and get it talk through properly um, I'm not sure what conversations the officers have had but I know the conversations I've had and I think there is room for improvement on what is proposed um, what have I said trees you know, it's, it's basically the need to keep the, the farming on that site so I think that's about it thank you chair Thank you, Councillor Faithful. As you know, we have to look at the application that's in front of us. Um, and one of the reasons for refusal is that it's just under double of what would be considered acceptable. Um, 
So we go to the other ward member, Councillor Pratt, please. Thank you, Chair. Um, yes, the uh, the uh, situation with the size of the uh, property is, is clearly in breach of policy H4, and uh, that that's the reason why uh, Chris has mentioned uh, that he is recommending a refusal, and, and that is quite clear. Um, it has been mentioned about development on the farm, and I'll just mention that, if I may. Um, the uh, the applicant at the same time as making this application has also uh, put in a bid for uh, the land to be developed. Um, and uh, the, although um, Chris has separated and discounted the applications uh, and, and a healer, uh, it is quite incompatible to propose to build a farmhouse to support farmland, which is at the same time being offered to EDDC planners for disposal to build 200 houses and warehousing on the site. You can't reconcile intent to sell the land for development and simultaneously claim it's a going concern. That weakens the claim. It seems illogical on the one hand to underpin a planning application for an above scale farmhouse, yet on the other hand, offer up the same farm for development under the healer scheme. So that is effectively another issue which uh, comes under the policy H4 in that the, uh, the, the, the future of this uh, land at Barracks Farm is uh, debatable. So uh, I, I'm uh, in favour of supporting uh, the recommendation for refusal. Thank you, Chair. Thank you, Councillor Pratt. Um, are you making that a proposal? Um, yes, I, I would, would be prepared to, uh, to propose a recommendation to support the, the refusal. Thank you. Um, is there a seconder, please? Yes, Chairman. Sorry, who's that? Councillor Key. Councillor Key. Yes. Would you like to speak on it, Councillor Key? Yes. Um, I would. I mean, I, I sympathise uh, with the applicant. You do need a house on a farm to actually run the farm. We had one very, very similar design to this at Salcom Regis, which was not in my ward, but which was flatly turned down because it was a mansion, not a house. Now, I've had four farm houses built in my area on farms for the sons to actually um, occupy, and they have all been between 220 and 250 square metres, which is what was agreed because they all wanted larger ones but not allowed. And I had one, in actual fact, that was built on a block of land. It was a, about 120 acres block of land, and that was at 220 square metres. This 330 square metres, which is what Mr. Rose has said, which it does not include the office and such like, is far, far in excess of what an agricultural dwelling should be. Now, I mean, there, there's no reason, I mean, to actually uh, say that this, the size of this is, is needed because it just isn't necessary and it's not appropriate. Therefore, I'm more than happy to support uh, Councillor Pratt on the refusal of this application. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Gee. Councillor Skinner. <clears throat> Thank you. And Councillor Key, like me, is, is a farmer. He's been farming for, for many, many years. And I'm going to take a slightly different tack to that. We've got ourselves into a place whereby 
the, the, the argument over whether or not we're going to have a house here, the principle of that has been agreed. The officers agree. Everybody agrees. Everybody, it's not, it's, that's not an issue about whether we're going to, whether we accept a house here. And in actual fact, uh, I, I think if we, if we, we've got to be a bit careful how we tread, because I think that there could be a possibility we may be overturned uh, uh, with a plan inspector. It may or may not. I don't know. that. I think even that would be in the wind a little bit. But are we not in the same place as we were just there with the other application? There are many, many principles here that we all agree with. And what we, what the officers haven't quite got to is, is it seems to me, Chair, through you, that the there is a, 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 a further sort of amendment to a plan that was coming forward. That's clearly an indication that the applicant is prepared to negotiate a little further. You're quite right as well, Chair, by saying that to a uh, previous uh, the Council of Faithful saying we've got to deal with this application that's in front of us and that's absolutely bang on the money and that's what we have to do. So I think uh, I can't move the recommendation yet about a deferral because I think that there's there's got to be room here for negotiation. If we have a refusal, what's going to happen here is, is that the, the refusal will go off and two, two, one of two things could happen. The applicant could go to appeal and, and he may or may not, not, not win that one. Or what he's got to do is come back and actually scale it down as well. Well, what a waste of time all that is. Why don't we save everybody's time and say, come on, Mr. Natskaville, scale it back a little bit. That's where the officers have wanted to be. We're in a place whereby we're giving you a steer from this particular planning committee. Councillor Key has also made the point that he thinks, he, I, I believe Councillor Key, I can, I can say that you agree with all the principles of having a house. What you're saying is that it's too big. I think that's the principle of what you're saying. So let's get a deferral on this one, if, 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 if I may. So what I would need to do is to go against the recommend, or I'll, I'll ask the, the proposer and second if we could actually go back and have a deferral to give the officers the opportunity, hearing where well, Mr. Nat, Mr. Natsuko is hearing from this particular committee that actually it's just a little bit too large and you need to pull this one back a little bit from the scale of what it's in. And I think everybody would be in a good place. A lot of time would be saved and money and officers time and money as well. And that's the place I would like to be. So I would be calling through you, Chair, of the, the proposal in the second to pull it back to a deferral and then give the offers the opportunity to get into a better place with Mr Natskeville, knowing where we're giving the officers our steer. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Skinner. And it's not a little bit bigger than what's acceptable. It's 161 square metres bigger than what is considered acceptable. Whatever. Whatever. Councillor Lawrence, Whatever. please. Thank you, Chair. Um, I just wanted to point out that, that there are some substantial farm buildings in front of this, this um, proposal. Um, we do have farms in, in, in East Devon that do have substantial farmhouses. Um, although um, I'm in agreement with the officers that this one it, it is a bit on the large side, I, so I, I'm, I'm also in favour of, of what Councillor Skinner has just said, um, give them the opportunity to, to scale it back to something that's more acceptable, I think then everybody is going to agree with, with the application and it, and, it, and it does save a lot of time and messing about. Thank you very much. Thank you. I'm going to go to the other speakers first, Councillor Davy. Thank you, Chair. Um, <clears throat> I, I thank Councillor Pratt for his intervention, but I, I think we, we need to look at the actual application here and, and not allow ourselves to be swayed by whether the land has also been submitted for a, a HELA um, because um, uh, that could be a kind of fallback position for the, the farmer that he's thinking, well, I'll have a bit of insurance here. Um, I, I mean, it's in quite a sustainable location. It's quite close to Ottery. Um, officers have accepted the need for the farmhouse. They've, they've accepted the viability arguments. And the real sticking point is the size. Now, I, I, one of the objections is the cost for uh, possible future owners. Well, I would have thought in terms of the cost of a farm, whether the farmhouse is a bit bigger uh, than normal, um, adding to the cost, I would have thought given the cost of land, that probably isn't going to be particularly significant. Um, and I'm just a bit uncomfortable with telling people how big a house they can have. Uh, you know, the, these people own this land. I mean, there's no problem with the actual footprint um, of the building. There's plenty of space around it. Um, 
And at the end of the day, it's still a four-bedroom house. And, and one of the things we have uh, issues sometimes with is, is that modern houses are often rather cramped and don't allow people enough elbow room. Um, it's a four-bedroom house with offices and a meeting room. Um, and, you know, these people are, are perhaps aiming to build their dream home. Um, and I feel a bit uncomfortable telling them how big a house they can have. Um, so I'm, I'm inclined to, uh, to go along with either approval or deferral in this instance. Thank you. Could I, at this point, go to Mr Rose, please, um, regarding the size of the house and, you know, all the issues surrounding that and what part the HELA has to play in the proposed or the po possibility of 200 homes built? Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so in terms of the... Uh... The cost and the size. The issue is that, uh, as members will be aware, quite often farm houses come on the market because they're no longer required. It's not that yeah. the hot, not that it gets sold as part of the farm, but the the the, the actual house itself becomes available. And the, and the first instance is that should go to other people in the farming industry. And obviously, the larger the house, the less affordable that that, that is likely to be. So that's why there's a and there are, there is a visual impact element to it in the countryside of trying to keep houses down to the the size that they need to be. And yeah, for that instance, we, we've we've had this sort of upper guide, as I think is reflected by what Councillor Key said, of sort of maximum of 200 square metres for the living accommodation. And then we allow a bit more added on for, you know, boot rooms, offices, uh, meeting rooms, that sort of thing. Yeah. So that, that's why the size in planning terms uh, does matter. In terms of the HELA, yes, um, I, I don't see the two as being linked like uh, Councillor uh, Pratt does. I mean, the, the we've got to deal with the application we've got in front of us, whether that site comes forward for development or even gets put in the new local plan. Our issues for another committee in another day, and I think Councillor Davey summed it up, I think it's probably a... The, the applicants, you know, covering all bases here, the fallback, isn't it? If, if, if it goes in the allocation, they'll do something different. If it doesn't, they need to carry on farming and they need the farmhouse. So from that point of view, um, I think what's happening outside with the HELA process is, is, is relevant in this case, and, and we don't need to take that, uh, take that into account. Thank you. Thank you. Right. Councillor Key, back to you. Yes, Chairman. All I was going to say is, in actual fact, I'm, I'm more than happy to actually withdraw my seconding of the refusal and go for um, the deferral. Thank you. Um, Councillor Pratt, as yes. the proposer. Yes, uh, I, I'm, uh, I'm prepared to uh, let it go for deferral. Chair, I'm sorry to interrupt. You um, broke up then. Yeah, go on, Mrs Shaw. Oh, sorry, thank you. Um, there are two limbs to the recommendation for this, and I would suggest that we yes. still proceed um, with uh, adoption of the appropriate assessment and then um, recommend that if members have been moved and second for deferral um, to, for negotiations as to the size of the dwelling. Yep. Does yeah. the mover and seconder accept that yep. recommendation? Oh, sorry. Thank you. Um, yeah. <laughs> that was okay. Councillor Pratt and Councillor Key. Could I hear from Councillor Pratt if he's happy with that and Councillor Key? Yes, certainly from Councillor Key. Thank you. Yes. And, and I'm okay with that. Uh, Thank, you. Thank you. Okay. Right, Councillor Lawrence. Thank you, Chair. Very briefly, could I ask um, if somebody can tell me, will this property be a subject of an agricultural tie or not? Uh, good point. Yes. Yeah, yes, it would be. Yeah. Thank you very much. Yeah. Thank you. Right. Uh, over to you, Mr. Shaw. We've had the proposal um, for a deferment. Thank you, members. If you could please indicate when your name is called, whether you support the motion to recommend adoption of the appropriate assessment and deferral for negotiations as to the size of the dwelling, or whether you are against the motion to recommend adoption and for the deferral, or whether you are in support, you are indicating an abstention from the vote. 
Before we go to the vote, Mrs Shaw, um, the applicant would like to come back. Um, I'm going to allow this because it, it's, it's, it might set a precedent, yeah? Over to you, Ms Nanskaville. Okay, I hope you can hear me. Um, so I'm not very good at speaking to a computer, but just quickly, this application took eight months to, for them to realize the size difference. And it's made to look like we've been in a, a long time to regard the size vision. But as soon as they realized that, they pushed it into this meeting, which I felt fine. But I did go back to them within 10 days with a smaller, with a smaller size, 108 square meters of living accommodation, but They've added in the boot room and everything. And I put in, I felt prudent to put in a garage because I felt plans were changing and what have you. So, and then, but then that's all been added up together to make the same size. Now, a double garage, you know, take that off if it need be, if it speeds or improves things. But we basically got down to 208 square meters of living accommodation um, besides the boot room and all the rest of it, which we, we you really do need. Um, that's, Really, and I don't think enough. I, I asked the councillors to put this through into the meetings for discussion, and for some reason they seem I don't know, but it makes it look like I haven't tried to accommodate their requests. And I just wanted right. to say that, but I have tried. Thank you very much for letting me come back in. Thank, Bible. thank, thank you. you. Um, and I think you meant officers, not councillors. There, I yeah. wonder if Mr. Rose would like to respond to that. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, well, only to say that I I, I remeasured it myself yesterday. This um, this uh, this other proposal that Mr. Nanskaville put in, and uh, I'm afraid it's significantly it, it only about ten square meters of living accommodation less than the current proposal, and that's excluding the garage and the offices. Um, so I, I remeasured it yesterday. If if it was down to two hundred and eight square meters, then uh, it, it would be a different matter. But I'm afraid yeah. when I when I measured the submission that came through to us, remeasured it yesterday, uh, it, it was only fractionally below the three hundred and sixty the word it got we got in front of us. Right. Thank you. Now we still have the motion. Yep. <clears throat> Are you happy for me just to go to the vote now, yes. Councillor Rag? Yes. Well, unless anybody else wants to put a hand no. up, if they've got other thoughts on that. No, no hands up. So we proceed, Mr. Shaw. Thank you. Therefore, members, please, when your name is called, indicate your support or you're against the motion or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Councillor Brown. Yeah, I'll support the motion. Councillor Chamberlain. I'll support the motion to defer, please. Councillor Davy. Support. Councillor Deseram. Support deferral. Councillor Key. Support deferral. Councillor Lawrence. Support deferral. Councillor Pratt. Support deferral. Councillor Skinner. Uh, to be clear, I'm supporting the adoption of the appropriate assessment and supporting the deferral. Thank you. Councillor Woodward? Um, what Ms Councillor Skinner said, yes, adopt the appropriate assessment and uh, supporting deferment. Thank you. Councillor Rag. Staying from both. Thank you. So that, um, apart from the one abstention, all the rest are in support. So, so approval of the adoption and a recommendation of deferral. Thank you. <clears throat> I think we'll go to the next agenda item, then we'll have a, a little break. Uh, so agenda item 15, application 213077, full application, Hire Stables, Meeting Lane, Limpston, page 142. Um, like to welcome again the ward members, Councillor Ingham and Councillor Young. Uh, over to you, Chris, to present your report, please. Thank you, Chair. So yeah, Higher high Stables, Meeting Lane, uh, Limpston. It's this uh, site in here. 
uh, members may recall it before because there was a previous application on here that I'll mention. So it's demolition of the stables and construction of a dwelling. It's here because it's a, technically it's a departure from the local plan because whilst we've granted uh, consent for conversion of the dwellings to, uh, sorry, the, the um, stables to a dwelling, um, this is now demolition and rebuild. So there's no policy, technically no policy support in the local plan for that. So this is an alternative uh, scheme to the fallback that they have for uh, conversion of these buildings to uh, a dwelling. And that uh, conversion was uh, allowed at appeal. Um, so this is the uh, layout of the site. You can see the, 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 the building as proposed and you can see the dotted lines uh, outlining the existing building. So from the road, they've kept a very similar footprint uh, so you won't uh, appreciate much, much difference. And that's the, the zoomed in version. So in effect, uh, you had this sort of H-shaped building before and they've now spun this, this wing around. Um, and again, so the, in terms of the... Um, the elevations, you can see the dotted blue of the outline of the existing and how they've, they've replicated, tried to replicate the, the height and the scale of the uh, existing buildings on the site. Uh, as you can see there, so very similar in terms of footprint um, area and height. And this is the location at the edge of, uh, the edge of Limpston, uh, down the lane. And these are those barns in that, that eight shape configuration and the view from, from the road. So we're north of Limston, we're outside the built up area boundary in the neighborhood plan area, and we're in the coastal preservation area. But as, and, and as I've said, it's, it's a, a new build now, rather than conversion, but following a very similar footprint and scale. So we've got a similar height and footprint. They're gonna timber clad the buildings again. They're gonna have similar sheeting roofing to keep a similar visual impact. And certainly this elevation that's gonna to remain to the lane here uh, is going again uh, as before with timber loofs and it's gonna have minimal glazing to make it appear as much as it can as a, as a converted barn in the countryside. Um, as I said, it's here because there's no support in the local plan or the neighborhood plan. There's support from policy H6 for replacement dwellings, but there's not the dwelling there at the moment. The fallback is under policy D8 and the conversion, which was allowed at appeal. And the applicant has uh, said that in this case, uh, demolition and new build is going to be a betterment in terms of allowing to provide a more energy efficient building, which they can do through a uh, new build rather than through conversion. In terms of the uh, visual impact, um, it'll, Im it'll improve the collection and the visual impact of the buildings there. Uh, it will follow on the pattern of the, the, the roof heights, the footprint, the materials. It's minimizing the glaze into the main uh, street. And it's not considered that it'll have a greater impact uh, on the, the visual appearance of that road than the conversion of the building and therefore no greater harm to the coastal preservation area. Uh, there's no greater highways impact and there's parking and turning provided on site and there's no neighbours there whose amenity would be impacted. And in terms of ecology, they're mit mitigating any bird impact by uh, putting in uh, new uh, nests and bird nests in the, uh, in the building. So given that there's a fallback here for conversion, and although there's no, uh, I think that justifies the rebuild of the policy on, uh, of the dwelling on the site, bearing in mind, as I say, no greater visual impact, there will be these uh, energy efficiency uh, buildings. And uh, given that and the lack of no wider harm, it's recommended for approval. Thank you. Thank you. Right, um, Councillor Ingham, is he back in the meeting yet? No, it appears not. Okay, Councillor Young, is he in? Yes, I am. Oh, yeah. are you have three minutes, Councillor Young. Okay, th uh, thank you for allowing me to speak. Um, as this is an approved change of use um, on the site, I, I support the application. However, I need to explain uh, to the residents who have objected, why in this case I cannot support their objections to refuse. I did not support the conversion in the first place, but as it was approved, we now need to consider the long-term benefits of building to modern building methods uh, to adapting a, a, a old wooden building. Uh, the objections were increase in surface water runoff flooding, um, in fact, the building regulations will not permit extra water runoff uh, from this site when it's being built. Um, new development in the countryside, there is already an approved application uh, for a change of use. So a new dwelling uh, would be uh, 
uh, most um, acceptable. Uh, so a, a new dwelling uh, will be very visible. Well, the new building uh, will be equal to the existing stable. In fact, it, it's going to be uh, less of a visual impact than the stables itself. Um, there, um, there was another objector who um, thought that it increased light from the building, uh, but the existing stables or the proposed change of use application uh, would have uh, given the same amount of light. And another objector was a loss of privacy. Again, the loss of privacy is, is lost if it continued to be a stable or the stables were converted. Therefore, I would hope the committee support this recommendation. Thank you. Thank you, Councillor Young. Right, Councillor Skinner. Thank you. I can't see Young spoke very well. Taking down some buildings, I've already got planning, putting up a house, it will be more uh, energy efficient. I'm all for it. I don't think I need to add anything else. And I will be moving the motion to support the officer's recommendation of support. Thank you. Happy to second that. Uh, happy to second. Thank you. Would you like to speak on it, Councillor Disarm? I think Councillor Skinner summed it up very well, so I don't think I need to add okay. any more seconds. Thank you. Um, there are no more speakers. Cova will we'll move to the vote. Mrs. Short. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, when your name is called, please would you indicate whether you support the motion to recommend approval subject to the conditions as set out in the report, whether you are <coughs> the motion to recommend approval or whether you're abstaining from the vote. Councillor Brown. Support the recommendation. Councillor Chamberlain. Support. Thank you. <coughs> Councillor Davey. Support approval. Councillor Deserum. Support approval. Councillor Key. Approve. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Skinner. Support approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Rag. Support approval. Thank you. That's unanimous in support. So that's recommended for approval. OK, thank you. Now, can we take a 15 minute break? Come back at five past one, please. We've only got another Member three. Go. Okay. Members, can I just ask you to make sure you're muted because we're going to leave the live stream on. Thank yeah. you. Chair, are you still there? Yes, I am, Wendy. So we're coming back up five past? Yes. OK, thank you. That, OK, we've only got three more to go. Shouldn't take long. OK. Thanks.
<laughs> right, are we ready? Ready, Wendy, when you are. Thank you. Let me just um, resume the recording. Okay. So would you like me to uh, roll call for the start? Yes, please. Yes, yes. Okay. So um, again, I'll start with you, Councillor Rag. Present. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Present. Thank you. Councillor Brown. <laughs> Are you back, Councillor Brown? Okay, I'll come back. Um, Councillor Davey? Present. Thank you. Councillor DeSarum? Good afternoon, Wendy. Yes, I'm back. Thank you. <laughs> Councillor Key? Present, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Lawrence? Present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Pratt? Present. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Skinner? Present. Thank you, Wendy. Thank you. Councillor Woodward? Present. Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, just missing Councillor Brown. Oh, there I'm, we are. I'm here. Thank you. Thank you. Back to you, Chair. Thank you, Wendy. Um, right, we move to agenda item 13, application 211618, full application, minor, 19 New Street, Honiton, on page 121. Uh, no speakers, so over to you, Chris, to present your report. Thank you, Chair. So, yeah, 19 uh, New Street in Honiton, and it's application for change of use of the ground floor from a retail use to a hot food takeaway with an external flue. Uh, it's here because there's a ward member objection. The site's uh, in Honiton Town Centre, very close to, and uh, in the conservation area. Uh, you'll see from the report that there was consent granted in 21 under a 20 reference yeah. application, but that had a different flu to it. So they've, yeah. they've implemented the proposal on the hot food takeaways there, but because it was a different flu, they've had to, had to reapply to us. Uh, but you'll see there's no objection from the town council, environmental health or uh, conservation. So this is the site in here and there's buildings at the rear. Uh, so this was the this is the flu now the amended flu uh, internally, uh, and this is the elevation here. So you can just see the flu out the out the back there, and that is the the flu, and it is fractionally and ever higher than previously consented. And as you can see from a distance through the gap, you can't see the flu from from this road. So it's behind the the gable here. The proposal is it for, for it to open as it has been under the previous consent from three till nine. Uh, and as I say, other, other than the change to the flu, it's as per that previous consent. And that previous consent was granted on the basis of compliance with policy E9 on the local plan. So it's aiding the vitality and viability of the town centre by providing a retail related use. The flu uh, was considered to be acceptable in visual impact terms uh, uh, because you can't see it from the wider area and you'll see again there's no objection from the conservation officer. With regard to amenity, the environmental health officer has been involved again and, and has uh, approved the extraction equipment and we've got a condition on ours. There were concerns originally about the impact of the use on the upper floors of the building, uh, but this has always been retail active at ground floor, uh, so it wasn't considered that the impact would be, would be any worse. And the parking position is, is unchanged. Um, there's no parking to the front of the site, uh, so uh, I think it's restricted, um, but that's unchanged from the previous consent. So, in effect, the only change is this flu design of this flu, which is uh, slightly higher than before, which actually is better in terms of the immunity of, of the residents. So, in light of that, uh, and no other changes and no other harm, uh, it's recommended for approval. Thank you. Um... Well, the ward member objected. It's unfortunate he he's not come. We we can only assume he has no further objections. Go to the speaker, then, Council Brown, please. Councillor Brown. Sorry, yes, I'm I'm back on now. Yes, sorry about that. My um, internet is not the best in the world, even though I live in the middle of a Honiton. Um, <laughs> Yeah, I mean, the objection to this seems to be from the flu, doesn't it? I mean, that seems yeah. to be the main cause of everything. Yeah. 
But um, nowadays, you can get what they call ductless kitchen extraction and freestanding self-contained recirculation units, which is something that's adopted by most London council councils, where you don't have an ex external extraction, where the fumes go into the um, into the outside of the building. Um, and East Devon don't seem to know about this. I mean, um, Burger King use it in all their units. Um, it is slightly more expensive to buy, but it's cheaper to operate and to run. Um, you don't have to have people coming around cleaning the, uh, the, the flues. Um, you just use carbon filters on them. And so, funny enough, these, well, one company that makes these units is um, just around the corner from the council offices. Um, so I don't see why these people couldn't go and just find out for the sake of being good neighbours and stopping uh, greasy bits and pieces coming out into the atmosphere from outside, well, why they can't, um, you know, have a look and see what they can do about this flu and get one of these systems put in. Oh, thank you for raising that, Councillor Brown. Um, if, if, if you want, I mean, I did go to a... Um, presentation of this funny enough last week that's how I know about it um yeah. up in um, up in the houses of parliament when they like, they produced it and the and a, and a booklet or quite a thick book um about all the different systems you can get um and if you would like one chairman I can pass one over to you uh, save you buying one or I can pass one on to the uh, the planning officers so they can see um uh, a system that can be used that doesn't affect people um and we could be on, on the same system as, as Westminster and a lot of London councils and um, people like Burger King and Weatherspoon that use it. Thank you. I, I think, what, for use in Blackdown House, are you saying? Well, just around the corner from Blackdown House, they, they yeah, make yeah. systems. Yeah. Um, well, I think we, we've got to look at this application that's before us. Um, the Environmental Health Officer has no concerns. Um doesn't anticipate any environmental health concerns. Yeah. So um, we, we just have to look at this information. This um, I found, I found it, if I did bring this up with um, with Mark Williams yesterday about uh, about this system and the environment officer at East Devon doesn't know about it. <laughs> oh well, I, I'm sure Mark Williams will acquaint the environmental health officer about it. He will um, do. Yes. Yeah, I'm sure he will. Okay. Um, Move on to Councillor Key then, David. Yes, I mean, I've, I've read this report and I hear that um, uh, Mr Rose is an actual fact. They've improved the uh, flu that is um, uh, going to do the extraction. I can't see any problem with it at all. It's overcome the uh, ward members' um, comments. And so I'm more than happy to put forward approval. Thank you very much. Is there a seconder, please? I'll second that. Thank you, Chair. Uh, would you like to speak on it? No, I think it's a fairly open and shut case. I think they're, they're doing a, a, as good a job as they yeah. can at the moment. Yeah. Um, yeah. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Councillor Woodward, do you have any additional? No, no, that's fine. Thank, thank you. you. OK, over to you, Mrs Shaw. Thank you, Chair. Members, you have the motion to recommend approval subject to the conditions as set out in the report. Please, when your name is called, would you indicate whether you support the motion to recommend approval, whether you're against the motion to recommend approval, or whether you're abstaining from the vote? Councillor Brown. I'll abstain on this one. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Support. Councillor Davey. Support. Councillor De Serum. Support. Councillor Key. Support. Councillor Lawrence. Support. Councillor Pratt. Support. Councillor Skinner. Support. Councillor Woodward. Support. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Rag. <clears throat> Thank you. So we've just one abstention and the rest in support. That is recommended for approval. Thank you, Wendy. Uh, agenda item 14 now, application 220013 full, 72 Park Lane, Exeter, 
And that's page 132, and there are no speakers. Over to you, Chris. Thank you. Yeah, so 72 Park Lane, uh, Exeter. So this is the site here between uh, number 70 and 70A. Yeah. Uh, and it's application for the uh, construction of a detached dwelling and it's before members because it's a departure. So 70A and 72 are in East Devon, uh, but, uh, but in our countryside technically, and the built up area boundary for Exeter runs around the back of the other property. So we're right adjoining the built up area boundary for Exeter, but in East Devon. And because of its close location to the built up area boundary with Exeter, we previously allowed 70A and we've allowed 72 because that was on the site of a former uh, works. So it had been previously developed. It wasn't building in the countryside. Uh, so that's why it's a departure. This is the design of the dwelling, which actually pretty much pretty similar to the dwelling next door. And you'll see from the photos that um, it's very similar in its footprint. There we go. Uh, and there's no landscape designations to this area. So it's continuing this terrace of prop or terrace, this row of properties here, which are of a, a different design and scale, as you can see in the, the section, the street scene down there. So this is the area. There's the built up area boundary for Exeter. And you walk, you walk down this road and you get to those lovely double mini roundabouts at, at Pinho in Exeter. Um, so it is well located in terms of access to those services and facilities. It's a it's an infill plot in effect, because there's this plot in the middle of these two houses that uh is vacant so we're, we're mirroring the design of this house but with a slightly larger porch on the front uh, which seems to have raised some concerns with the parish council although um, it, it's a large dwelling sat back from the road um, different character the, the larger porch uh, isn't really of any any concern and then we move along and then that's the house the other side of it um, so although there's no uh, policy in the local plan to support it. It's right next to the built-up area boundary in Exeter. It's well located close to services and facilities. It's two, next to two dwellings we previously approved with no, no landscape or, or, or wider visual harm. And as I say, in effect, it's an infill plot. And there's no harm to the amenity of the adjoining properties. There's just two windows in the side elevation facing this property, but they're um, obscure glazed. There's no highway safety concern. They can get access off the road to two parking spaces. Um, the applicant has come in uh, with some levels details uh, following the publication of the agenda, just so that um, so if members are minded to um, recommend approval, then I'd need to, if it's OK with you, just change some of the conditions to reflect the fact he's now got us those those levels details to ensure that um, the property sits at the right level on the site in relation to the two adjoining properties. Yeah. Um, but subject to that, recommended for approval. Thank you. Councillor Skinner. Move the recommendation. To, don't need I, to add anything else. I was just wondering, is Councillor Chamberlain, it's not your ward. Paul Clist, is it? Paul Clist, Pino? Is that not Councillor Chamberlain? I'm sorry, I might be wrong. I don't know. Who was here just now, wasn't she? She's here, isn't she? I am. Yes, she's here. here. I am indeed here. I, I didn't need to speak quite straightforward. This one in Phil's site, I agree with you. I will, I will second your motion. Well, you can propose if you like. You do the proposal and I'll do the second. You're the board member. Very kind of you. Thank you very much. I propose uh, approve um, going forward. Thank you. There we go. Got that? Good. Crack Thank, on. You. Lovely. Thank you. Thank you. No more speakers. So to the vote with you, Shirley. Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you've got the motion to recommend approval subject to the slightly amended conditions mentioned by Chris Rose as set out in the report. Please, when your name is called, would you indicate whether you support the motion to recommend approval, whether you're against the motion to recommend approval or whether you're abstaining from the vote? Councillor Brown. I support the re recommendation. Thank you. Councillor Chamberlain. Support. Thank you. Councillor Davey. Support approval, thank you. Councillor De Serum. Support approval, thank you. Councillor Key. Support approval. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval, thank you. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Councillor Skinner. Support approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Rag. Support approval. Thank you. That's unanimous in support, so that's recommended for approval. Thank you. Uh, right, final item, agenda item 16, application 213060, full uh, Cambridge Cottage 
Falcon Road, Sidmouth, page 153, and there are no speakers, and it's before us because the applicant works for East End District Council. Over to you, Chris. Thank you, Chair. Yeah, so we're in the centre centre of uh, Sidmouth, and it's a little little backland site here uh, behind a terrace that's listed, uh, and it's an application for a single story side extension. So it's this side extension that, that's going on here. This is the rear view, and um, from the front, so it's this single story uh, side extension, uh, and then from the aerials, it's this element here. Uh, so uh, quite small. Uh, there was original uh, concerns from the town council about overdevelopment and concerns from the conservation team because originally the extension was adjoining this build, the adjoining neighbour here, which is a listed building, uh, part of this terrace. But since then, that's to the left here. Since then, the building's been moved away from the boundary, so it no longer adjoins that listed building. So it's overcome those concerns. It's matching materials, it's infilling this gap, matching materials to the same, to the uh, to the dwelling that's there. Single story, so minimal impact on the uh, neighbouring property. So suitable design, minimal impact, overcome the impact of the listed building. No wider views from the conservation area, no amenity harm, so it's recommended for approval. Thank you. Councillor Skinner. Again, move the recommendation, Chair. Don't need to add anything. Thank you. Thank you. Seconder, please. Second it, Councillor Key. Yeah, want to speak on it, Councillor no. Key? No, okay. Chairman. I'd go to the boat then, Mrs Shaw. <laughs> Thank you, Chair. Yes, members, you have a motion before you to um, approve the, the uh, application subject to the conditions as set out in the report. Please, would you, when your name is called, indicate whether you're in support of the recommendation to approve, whether you're against the recommendation to approve, or whether you are abstaining from the vote. <laughs> Thank you. Councillor Brown. Yes, support the recommendation. Councillor Chamberlain. Support the recommendation. Councillor Davy. Support approval. Councillor De Serum. Support approval. Councillor Key. Support approval. Councillor Lawrence. Support approval. Councillor Pratt. Support approval. Thank you. Councillor Councillor Skinner. Support approval. Councillor Woodward. Support approval. Councillor Rag. Support approval. Thank you. So that is also unanimous in support. So that's recommended for approval. Thank you, Wendy. <clears throat> that brings our meeting to an end. And I'd like to thank everyone, uh, members of the public, um, certainly members of the committee um, and our officers for their attendance and, and their support. Uh, members, can I remind you that until the Democratic Services team confirm that the live streaming and recording have stopped, you can still be seen and heard and any comments may be recorded. Um, personal thanks to members and officers. Um, just when you think things couldn't get more interesting, something else pops up. So um, it's been, been